Hi. I'm not in frame. Also, I decided not to do my makeup at all today. I usually put like some concealer or whatever underneath my eyes because my eye bags are way too prominent and I don't like them. But I figured, you know what? Fuck it. They match my hoodies. So just might as well just leave them there. Uh. Hello, hello. We are finishing Apollo Eustis today. Um... I'm really excited because I don't really remember much of this episode at all, actually. Like, there are, like, certain things that I remember, but, like, the thing I remember the most is the fact that my, my 3DS just crashed, like, three times during this one part. And I'm like, I had to, like, play the same thing, like, Four times. I was annoying. <laughs> I don't even remember why it crashed. Anyways. <sighs> I guess we might as well just like get like straight into it or whatever. You know? Why not? <sighs> I hope you are as excited as I am because oh boy. Mason system. That trial seven years ago was the beginning of it all. This I know beyond a doubt. The mysteries of the past work their magic on the present. But you'll soon be finding all of this out for yourself. Which of Magnificremory's disciples pulled that trigger? Where did the vanishing defendants at Grammarie go? Oh, he turned into Shady Smith, apparently. And fucking died. In the first fucking episode in this game. A dark truth lurks behind the forged diary page. And what about the girl who was left behind? Fucking go. The past left us these four keys to unlocking the truth. I'm having chills. But that's not all. There are four keys in the present as well. And when all the questions have found their answers, the final trial will begin. No worries. But first, you must chase the truth through then and now. Think of it as a game. Okay. A game within a game. Lovely. I, Phoenix Wright, will be your guide through this game. That terrible trial saw me present forged evidence. It ended, half finished, when the defendant vanished. What became of me after that? As your investigation proceeds, the answer will become clear. Oh, and one more thing. There is something I must tell you. As Apollo Justice has his bracelet, so too do I have my own weapon of sorts. My Magatama is Fucking go! What does it do, you ask? That I would have you see for yourself. Well now... Shall we begin? Touch the arrow to switch between past and present. Phoenix really here talking to me, like, personally, like... God! I don't understand why- the same fucking, like, uh... Notification? Something like that keeps popping up. It's like, trying to install, like, a language pack or something. Couldn't install, something happened, I'm like, what happened? It doesn't tell me! I've tried, like, several times and I'm like, okay! It does it every single time I turn my PC on and like leave it on for a while and then just pops up out of nowhere and I'm like, okay, can you stop? I get it, you can't fucking do it. Well, let's begin seven years ago, in the past. It is right after my last trial came to an abrupt end. Now that you know the game, let's play.
All right, I'm just kind of like looking around here. I mean, I know there's something here, but... What in the zero escape is this? <laughs> it specifically gives me a... Um, Virtue's last reward. Uh, vibes. Yeah. Don't know why. Hold on. Ha. Ah. We can finally find out exactly what happened. Like, we know, like, basically what happened. But why? And for what? Let's go to where exactly? Oh, right in cool offices, apparently. Sweet. The nightmare trial was over, and the new nightmare of figuring out what had happened had just begun. I wanted to wake up, to walk away, but I figured I'm the only one who could do this, probably. And besides, I had plenty of time. Thanks to the Bar Association Review Board's decision, it's hard to work when your attorney's badge has been taken away. Oh, morning, Daddy. Ah, I'm so glad you came. You okay, Daddy? Me picking on you? <laughs> I am fine, as always. This old boy here is to help me after all. That's a young man to you. Good morning. It's a cute outfit you have on. Thanks. My first show's today, after all. We went through this last episode. Two weeks had passed since then. I called her into my office. Trucy, there's something we need to talk about. It's been two weeks since your father disappeared. We need to start thinking about your future. I, um, did some calling around. This is hard to say, but you have no living relatives. So... I was wondering if you wanted to stay with me for a while. Just until your daddy comes home. It won't be long. I hope. Uh, of course. It's totally your choice. If you don't like it here, you can go wherever, you, wherever you'd like. I could look up some places you might like to stay at. This is so weird. Mr. Attorney. Daddy told me all about you. He said I could trust you. Huh? Really? So if I stay here, does that mean you'll be my family? Huh? Uh, um, I guess so? Getting weirder. Um, Mr. Attorney? Uh, actually, why don't you call me Nick? Or you can call me Daddy if you'd like. It doesn't have to be today or anything. Okay, say, Daddy. That was quick. Yes? If I move here, I have to switch schools, right? And I was thinking, I haven't paid for lunches at my last school for a year. So thanks, Daddy. Ah. Oh, and this office is a little blah. A little color goes a long way, you know? Ah. Oh, and Daddy, you got fired from work, right? Don't you worry one bit. I'll work twice as hard. We'll make it through this. Trucy, how old are you? Oh, I'm eight. Don't let appearances deceive you. I'm a young professional. Stick with me and you'll be you'll do just fine, Daddy. Ah, thanks. Why does it feel like she's already in charge? <laughs> so Daddy, you got fired from being a lawyer, right? You could at least kind of look aside or something when you say that. It's actually kind of hard for me. For Daddy. I'm sorry, Daddy. Wait, is that foolish pride? 
My other daddy always used to talk about that. Uh, actually, that's pretty accurate. So here's my idea. We'll make a new office. Law just seems so stiff, doesn't it? And no one will be my friend at school that way. Well, that won't do, I guess. I just don't know much about anything other than law. Or even much about law, if you were to ask something. <laughs> well, at least it's honest, you know. Maybe the problem is calling it an office. We should call- we should run an agency instead. You mean, like, a talent agency? Forgive me for asking, but doesn't that require talent? You got me, don't you? I'm a professional. A professional? Yep. After all, I am directly descended from the famous Sacra Marie. Directly descended? He's your father. Oh! And now I'm directly descended from the famous Phoenix Wright, too! I think an eight-year-old just massaged my ego. Could you tell me a bit more about your daddy? Uh, Sacra Marie? Daddy? Sure thing, daddy! Okay. Which daddy was that again? Daddy's so amazing! The biggest star of Troop Grammarie, and they're big! The Grammaries. They were on television a lot. I haven't seen them on much recently, come to think of it. Big magic happens when you put Sack and Valent Grammarie together, you know? Once they made a giant waterfall right there on the stage, she is adorable. And this giant trout swam up the giant waterfall. Let me guess, it was a giant fisherman waiting for him at the top. I wish I could have seen more of Daddy's magic. Nah, I shouldn't have brought it up so soon. I wonder what'll happen to me with Daddy and Mommy both gone. Mommy? Yeah. What about Mommy? I haven't heard anything about Trucy's mother. But I have my magic and a great Daddy, even if he is un unemployed. You know, I think things are going to be okay. I wonder if she'll talk about her mother. So, Trucy, you're a professional. Yes, um, it's like that thing they say. Baby frogs grow up to be frogs? They say that? I always thought it was funny, though. What was? Aren't baby frogs called tadpoles? Maybe they thought it would be easier to understand that way for kids. How stupid. Right, so, in conclusion. You're a professional magician, Trucy. That's right. Well, well. Wanna see a trick? You're going to do a magic trick? Please show me. Actually, I would like I would like to see your trick. The future of the agency depends on it after all. That's the spirit! Ready? Here it goes. Ta-da! Hey folks, it's Mr. Hat. I gotta say it's been good it's good to be seen. Yeah! Whoa! That was startling. The amazing Mr. Hat! Isn't he great? Your friendly neighborhood Mr. Hat at your service. He certainly makes an impression. Doesn't he? <laughs> I'm so glad you like him, Daddy. Though my routines do get a bit heady at times. Huh? Get it? Heady? Heady? Your friendly neighborhood Mr. Hat nearly gave me a heart attack. Yeah, now tell me about your mother. Can you tell me about your mommy, if it's okay? Why is... Why is daddy with a capital D? That's what I want to know. <laughs> when mommy is not. Mommy was so pretty. She was like an angel up on stage. On stage? You mean with your daddy? Yep. She was always there with Zack and Valen smiling. But then she went away. Went away? It was a grand illusion, but... She made a mistake. She vanished, and I guess she didn't know how to get back. Hi, Fleur. Maybe so. I cried then. A lot. It's when Daddy gave me this. Here. This is your mother. She's beautiful. Her name is Talasa, Talasa Grammarie. Poor girl, I didn't know her mommy had gone missing. Now her daddy's vanished too, right before her eyes. Hey, daddy, you won't... Don't worry, 
I won't vanish. I promise. Right. You can't even do magic. You're like a backup plan. Daddy always said to have a backup plan. I guess all I raid as is a backup plan. I think that's probably enough for today. Sorry to ask you so much all at once like that. It's okay. After all, we're family. I just hope you're ready. The right talent, Daisy. Opens tomorrow. What? B but are we representing anyone? Me and you. That makes two, Daddy. I think you need more than that to make an agency. Besides, you may be a magician, but I'm no talent. Well, I'm sure there's something you're good at. Well, when you put it that way... You mean you don't have any tricks? No old standbys? This will not do. A boy should always have a trick or two in his pocket. Okay, okay, I'll think of something. That's the spirit. See you bright and early tomorrow, Daddy. Welcome to the team, Daddy-o. The team, right. Sometimes, when magicians vanish, they leave something behind. That's how Trucy became Trucy Wright, my daughter. To be honest, I was pretty lost those first few days. Thinking back on it, it was a pretty dark time in my life. But Trucy, happy, smiling, Trucy, she was my light. Ew, tell me why I'm about to fucking cry right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not the only one. Sweet, so... I did something here, right? Not really. Okay, that's cool. Okay, now where to go? Defendant lobby number two. I didn't think I'd be back here for a while. Huh, they really just changed the entire thing for Apollo Justice. Interesting. I didn't want to have to remember that day. You know I deeply regret having to declare a verdict in this way. This trial is over. Huh, your honor. Y yes Mr. Sack? There's one thing I wish to make clear. Today, in this courtroom, you cannot declare me guilty. What are you talking about? I am talking about this. Mr. Enigmar! The defendant's escaped. Find him, quick! Bailiff, close all exits from the building. On the double, he must not be allowed to escape. When I came here on that fateful morning, I still had my badge, but now, like an amputated limb, I can still feel it itching. It's not there. It's not there. Where do I start? I don't even have the authority to investigate. Hey, you there, sir! Gun on the hands! Floor on your head! Now, now, now! <laughs> oh, Meekins. What's the big idea? My ears! No unauthorized personnel aren't allowed in here. That will mean all unauthorized personnel are allowed. Yeah, I was like, that was a double negative. <laughs> the chicken. The chicken sound. Oh my god. Just say it like it is, sir. And it's usually wrong. Thrown out of the precinct, lost my friends, my girl, and even my wallet. We've met before, haven't we? On a case, two years ago? No recollection of that, sir. Huh? For me, working on a case is always in the present. Progressive tense, sir. There is no past, there is only now, sir. Okay, okay, you're the bailiff, right? Yes, sir. Court bailiff. Mike Meekins at your service, sir. Um, I've asked to meet with the bailiff at this court who let the magician escape. I try to make this as absolutely clear as possible for you, sir. It was me, sir! But you were a regular police officer once, right? 
Sometimes bad things happen to good people, sir. Yeah, remember when you had to be the blue badger? Oh, that was, that was a time. That was one of those times. It was, you know, out of all the times, that was one of them. <laughs> What needle? Something tells me it's a long story. Let's not go there. Oh, cross-stitch needle, I see. I hope you find it. So you were in charge of, of security at the time of the vanishing. I'm dying over here. Oh, oh, it's a hard knock life, sir. Thrown out of the precinct, lost my friends, my girl, lived even my wallet. Yeah, we, we get it. Guess I wasn't the only victim. The last time we met, you were a police officer, right? In fact, you're still wearing your uniform. <laughs> they just couldn't be bothered to make a, a new, like, sprite. <laughs> Sir, I, I, I wish I didn't have to tell you this. But last year, tragedy struck a rising star at the precinct. I lost my case files four times in three days. They fired me. That takes real talent, actually. I don't know what they're missing. So here I am, sir. Forced to start from square one, a lowly bailiff. But your uniform. I took it with me as a souvenir the day I was fired. That can't be legal. So, you were the one who let the magician get away that day. I'm dying over here. Okay, we get it. Star rises among the court. Court bailiffs. Full of hope. Then, tragedy strikes. Is there anything you can tell me about it? About Sacra Marie's disappearance? Oh, the humanity! That's enough of that. Well, yes, I'd say it was around 2 p.m. when I heard a commotion in court. I opened the door to see what might be amiss. The door slams open, slam, and some guy's face is right there in front of me, face! So you saw someone suspicious coming your way? Yes, and I being a bailiff of, of little standing, I gave chase. I chased that silk cat all the way down the hall, sir. I have a diagram of the court building here. Aha! Uh -huh. There's courtroom number seven, that's where I was, sir. Well, then I'm like trying to like think of like the layout. <laughs> How does this remind you of Skyrim? <laughs> but myself, marry a friend to call my own. I'm just like, thinking of the the layout and trying to like line it up with what we know of the layout from the first investigations game. Apparently there are like nine courtrooms. Oh, yeah, by the way, do you notice like something different today? Hold on, let me, the background. I changed it. Like, you can't really see it that well. But it's not the same one. Not really. Uh, let's see if I can find the one that I used to have. This is the one I used to have. Like, they're similar, sure, but they're not the same. So... Actually, if I just do this, and you can, like, see it better. And this. Quite the difference, I would say, anyways. It was to do it in solitude 
let the king murderer escape out the door and he is executed when you first arrive. Oh, is that the dude that's being executed that you like have to save or something? I don't know. I never actually played Skyrim myself. It is. And I'm gonna change it for the next one too. <laughs> Me sitting up like all night just thinking of like dumb ways to- I need to add the screens again. There we go. Thinking of dumb ways to just like add to my stream layout. <laughs> You're a friend to call my own. Okay, and which way did Sakura Marie run after bursting through the courtroom door? You went up like this and around the corner, like that. So I, with no delay, ran after him with no delay. When I turned the corner, I saw that magic man run into the defendant lobby. Swiftly, I ran. Following him, I threw myself boldly into the room. Why, I remember it like it... Like it was right there, because it was. Lobby number two, sir. You ran into this room. Hmm, I don't see any place to hide in here. Believe it or not, sir. I didn't believe it. Here in this room, a magician, gone, vanished like a puff of smoke. Except there wasn't even any smoke. He was just gone. That's impossible. Do I have the, the map? <laughs> Yes, that, that word. Oh, how many times have I said that word? Even the sound of it causes me indescribable pain. I'm dying. I'm dying over here. Okay, I won't say it again, promise. But you have to admit it's imp uh, difficult to vanish into thin air. You found the needle, yay. Did you search the lobby? I searched. I mean, yeah, from what we know of, like, the lobby layouts, the windows are barred, so... There is no way for him to have escaped. Right? Why the pause? Th th there was nothing here at all, sir. That's right, nothing was here, sir. How can he talk so loud and still be hiding something? So Zack was in this room when he vanished. Absolutely, sir. I saw him with my own eyes. Eyes! The red silk hat, that flowing cape. He ran right in here, right inside this room. Silk hat, cape. That's Zack, all right. But sir, look at the room. There's not a single place to hide. Sir, there was nothing I could do but... Nothing, sir. What about now? Have any ideas? Sir! I ideas about what exactly, sir, if you don't mind me asking? You've had quite a bit of time since then. Has nothing occurred to you at all? Do you have any idea what trick he might have used to disappear like that? Psyche locks. I should have known. Nakatama. One of my most prized possessions, which I got during a certain case. You can show me the locks on people's hearts. And if I can unlock their hearts, they'll tell me their secrets. The Magatama starts it all. And the Magatama ends it. You finished your popcorn already? See, this is why you eat popcorn. With chopsticks. Hmm. Apparently I can just get right into it, so I will. Oh, they remade this song. Interesting. Okay, Mr. Meekins, what do you know? Spit it out. Hey! <laughs> What's, what's with all the atmosphere in here all of a sudden? You know something, and I'm going to find out what. Sacra Marie vanished from this room. How do you do it? <laughs> How, sir? Well, sir, I can't say it's I... Sir! Why are you so nervous if you aren't hiding something? Well, sir, I... You see, at the time, sir, I was here and... Listen! It was impossible! What could such a little girl possibly do anyway? What did you just say? Yeah, sir, 
Did I just say something, sir? No, you screamed it through that megaphone of yours. There was someone else in the room, wasn't there? Sir, I'm going to have to invoke my right to rem remain in a state of not talking. It's okay, Meekins. You don't have to tell me who Sack's accomplice was. I know who was here in this room that day. Sir, I, sir, I. Oh my god. I've never seen that girl until just the other day. Mr. Meekins, I'm not buying it. Sir! The chicken. The chicken sound. Why is it so perfect? Sir, that day. She was here, in the room, sir. But he wasn't. You mean you chased her into this room, not him. Sir, in my days as a police officer, literally days, I have learned a thing or two. What? Days as in two days? What? <laughs> okay, just one thing, but it was how not to mistake a girl for a seven foot tall magician. Seven feet? Sack isn't that tall, is he? You have a point. I find it hard to imagine that anyone would mistake a little girl for Sakura Marie. But you saw something. And therein lies the trick. You think you n know what it was, Mr. Meekins. Tell me, does this trick look familiar? <laughs> What's that? That girl's favorite trick. The amazing Mr. Hat. She uses it in her show, then at the Wonder Bar. Have you been to the Wonder Bar? Oh my god, isn't that like a... Isn't Wunderbar, isn't that a, a, a German word? Isn't that like the German word for wonderful? Amazing. Wunderbar. <laughs> uh. So... It wasn't a w waking dream, was it, sir? Come again? At night on the stage, I saw a vision. Except, it wasn't a vision. It was a hat. An amazing Mr. Hat. He really exists. Remember it clearly. Well, the details are a little vague. Then you don't remember it. <laughs> wunderbar, wunderbar, wunderbar. <laughs> yes. But if if you remember it clearly, but the details are vague, then you don't remember it clearly. <laughs> God, this man is just like a walking contradiction, <laughs> really. Sacra Marie exited the courtroom. I gave chase and cornered him in the in the corner room, sir. Sacra Marie, don't even think. Don't even think you can escape Meekins! Down on your hands! Throw on your head! Uh, hello? Something the matter, mister? Uh, no, that is... Sir, I'm currently chasing a suspect, sir. Sacra Marie, do you know him? Oh, I love Sacra Marie! His magic is the best! I'm his biggest fan! Okay. I see. That's why you're wearing that costume you're wearing. Anyway, that very same sack came into this room. But no one's been in here except me. But, but he has to be in here somewhere. Under the sofa, in the trash can, behind the painting, under the rug. So, Trucy was his accomplice. Imagine my astonished surprise when, one week later, I just happened to walk into a bar and see... Him. Mr. Hatz. I couldn't believe my own eyes. For a while, I thought it had all been a long dream. A dream that lasted a week? <laughs> but it wasn't the magician who disappeared. It was Mr. Hatz. It seems complex. What really happened that day was quite simple. You were standing by the door, and now came Sack. But that wasn't all. Another person got in, in on the act, and she was standing in front of lobby number two. Along with Mr. Hat. Ah, that's the beauty of it, isn't it? So, while you are standing in shock and amazement, the magician rounds the corner. 
most likely runs through in the closest door into lobby number one. This is where you come in. You turn the corner in rather lukewarm pursuit. And at that very moment, Trucy runs into lobby number two. And all she has to do is tuck away the, the amazing Mr. Hat. Sir, I... I only lost sight of him for the briefest of moments. Then I saw that cape. Sakura Marie's red cape fluttering like a cape. Astounding, sir. All my days of posting queries and making inquiries and chasing quarries wasted. It was as if I could see them melting away like an ice cream cone left by the side of the road to die. Or the scattered remains of a messy messily eaten chocolate parfait. Such sweet sorrows. I'm sorry. I had no idea how much you had suffered on account of this case. It... It's an honor, sir. I've apologized to people many, many times. Sometimes more than once. But this is the first time anyone's ever apologized to me. Actually, how about that girl? I'm sort of her guardian now. Is that so? Listen, I don't think you can just, like, claim her. As your daughter, you know, you need, like, papers, don't you? Like, you need, like, actually, like, adoption papers. <laughs> or surely will be counted as a kidnapping, right? <laughs> Which is, like, why in the beginning of the game it, it doesn't, like, quite make sense that, like... But like to be a legal guardian you need to sign papers anyways you still need to sign like paperwork I'm pretty sure and in like the first case uh, Shady Smith aka Zach Grammarie is wearing like the locket with the picture of Trucy and Phoenix takes that from him probably because he like gave it to him when he met with him you know, because obviously he knew who he was all the time, which is probably why they met to play poker in the first place. And... Uh, he had to take that back, or it, or his secret would probably, like, be revealed, right? And his identity was to be kept, kept a secret after he disappeared. But, like, they ran a check on that locket. And when Phoenix said that it was his daughter, they confirmed that, yes, we did a check. It is his daughter. So, there has to have been, like, some kind of paperwork then between here somewhere. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Is that so? Sir, you should know that I harbor no ill feelings whatsoever in my harbor. Um, okay. I mean, I... Hmm. I think it's possible. In Japan, it's probably possible. It's easier to, like, adopt as one person. Maybe. I don't know. It's probably not easy, but it's, like, easier than, like, elsewhere. Where it's... Right? It's probably still easier with your two. I don't fucking know. But I know that if, like, um... Uh, with, like, uh, gay couples in Japan, you can't get legally married in Japan if you're gay, right? So what they do, they adopt each other so that they become family. What the title technically is, I don't fucking know, but they adopt each other apparently. <laughs> That's the thing. Now you know. Okay. Let the defendant escape. That's a stone cold truth. Just another step on my way from singing in the blues to wearing the blues. Someday, sir, I'll be standing side by side with the great detective gumshoe. Um, Mr. Meekins? This is a free ticket to the show at the Wonder Bar. If you want. It... It's an honor, sir. 
sir. I can't count the number of things I've taken from me. I've had taken from me, sir. But no one's ever given me anything for free. Right. I'll see you in court next time, then, sir. I look forward to it. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 a loophole, I guess. Like, obviously, it doesn't beat like the uh, actual thing, but like you know, close enough, I guess. The lies were on Sacra Marie that that day in court, until his mysterious disappearance. Now, part of the mystery's been revealed: the magician remained out of sight. It will be seven years before I met him again. Exactly. Oh, sweet. Forest Bowl Club. Interesting. I'll be taking my leave now. Still have some work to do back at the back at the office, and I guess I'll go back to my piano. To be honest, it's better when you aren't playing. This frigid culinary dungeon almost feels comfortable. Later then. Beach. <sighs> Two hours left on my shift. I wonder if we'll get any customers tonight. Ahem. You know who I am. Who I am? No, but if you hum it, I can play it. Just kidding, I don't do requests. How about a different sort of request? You see, I play cards. Oh, a customer. I was just hoping someone would come in and save me from a night at the, at the Keys. If you seek a true competition, I have heard the Borscht Bowl Club is the place for this. Now I see the rumor is true. And this is a friend of yours? Why is he there? <laughs> no, god damn it. I was hoping I wouldn't have to see his fucking boring ass face again. God. Ah, don't mind me. I'm just your friendly neighborhood's newsman. Ah, he will not be playing tonight. When his business is finished, I shall send him home. This competition will be between us, no others. Right Talent Agency represents two artists, and I'm number two. I play piano. Well, sort of. It's actually just a front for my real talent, which is playing poker. Don't ask me how I got started. I don't remember. But I'm good. Real good. It didn't take long for rumors to get around. To the Borscht Bowl Club. If you want a real game, that guy's never lost. People don't come to hear me tickle the ivory. They come to watch me play cards. Is this a seedy poker club? No. It's a restaurant. We don't play for high stakes. There's no money involved. The real players carry cash. And they're always thirsty. It's a handy source of income for the club owner. And let's compete. I'll take you to the room. The hideout, yes. But before we go... Yes? Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Shady Smith. Oh, and I'm Brushel. Spark, Brushel. News reporter. Oh, I'm... No, no. Phoenix Wright. Huh? You must always look a man in the eye when you make your introductions. You still do not know who I am? Have we... Met? Aha! Today, in this courtroom, you cannot declare me guilty. What are you talking about? I am talking about this. Yeah, we get it. We've seen this like 15 times already. Yeah, I find him. Total exits, fine. On oh, the double. Mm -hmm. You can't be. But you're... 
Sacra Marie? Yes, the reincarnation act of the century. Pity I only have an audience of one. You. Sacra Marie? This must be a bad dream. In a sense, this guy ruined my life. You there. D Duh. We will play soon. Ready to the room. Duh. I will be preparing the hideout for you. Are you really him? The Sacra Marie? No, I'm Shady Smith. Remember this. How many years has it been now? Six? In exactly three days from now, it will be seven. I cost you so much inconvenience, I fear. Yeah, who could say that? Is she well? Trucy, I mean. I don't fucking know, I just sent her off overseas somewhere. I don't, don't know where she went. She's fine. I got her working already. Hope you don't mind. I hardly need to express my gratitude, but you have it. This is why I have come. That, and to settle a matter of cards. By which you mean poker? Those eyes. He's serious. I despise losing above all else. And so, I have decided that I will win tonight, no matter what it takes. I know this guy's type. And they're dangerous. Everything is about the competition. All else is secondary. Perhaps we should take this time to talk before we play. No, you have much to ask me. I believe that they talked because she was in on it. She was in on the whole like disappearing act, so obviously she was well aware of it. But like, still, she's she was only eight at the time. And I, you. We competed that day seven years ago too. Ah, uh, yes, you must have been surprised. Call to the call to the detention center out of the blue. Two. One. Showdown time. I, I lost. It's only a game of poker. The game I played for a, a long time and only lost twice. Who was the first? The man I killed, of course. You choose your defense attorneys by playing poker. Some are hired, others fired. When you compete, you see a man's true nature. You know what I speak of. I know that you do. Trucy's power? Trucy? She is in a class of her own. For seven years, I've played poker here at the Borscht Bowl Club. I've never lost once. I'm good. Not that good. I win because whenever there's a big game, I bring in Trucy. And she sends me signals. Daddy, he's got a good hand. He might have a chance if you act quick. Better call him soon. Can you tell me what her power is? Judging a person's thoughts by reading their reactions is a staple of performance magic. Oh, there was this, like, um... YouTube video I saw. Where it was, like, hyper-focused, like, um... Tell, uh, something. Tell perceiving or something, I don't know. Judging a person's thoughts by reading their reactions is a staple of performance magic. But those of Trucy's line possess far greater skill. Her line? Recall, you were the second man to whom I've lost. Magnifique Marie. It's the first time I learned of this power, as you call it. Wait, so you're saying her power is genetic? It's just in the Grammary blood or something. Blood. I'm sorry, 
but it is not something told lightly to outsiders. And it is nothing you need to know at, th at this time. It's some kind of grammary secret then. Fine. She's 15 this year? She's still trying her best to follow in your footsteps, you know. I... see. When I planned my disappearing act, it was the thought of her alone that gave me pause. Wait, you were planning on vanishing from the get-go? Yes, and for that, I must apologize. However, I could not be found guilty that day. Because of this. This? The transferal of rights. You see the signature? The transferal? That's Magnifique Grammarie's signature, isn't it? Hereby give all rights to the secret staging and performance of my magic. To the recipient named below. And the recipient's name is you, Sacra Marie. This has to be like the original one that's from the... Yeah. That's the real page that was ripped out. Yes, it is I. Wait, this page looks torn. You recall the diary, yes? No, please, I don't want to look at this again. Uh, take a look at this diary. <sighs> Note that a page has clearly been ripped out, as it just so happens. I have here what I believe to be the missing page. He said I believe, he didn't say that it's confirmed to be the missing page, though, to be fair. Wait, let me see that. What could I forget? That scrap of paper lost me my attorney's badge. This is the real page that was torn from the book. Magnifique gave it to me that night. You could have told me this earlier, like, seven years earlier. Once again, I must apologize. It was all I could do to prepare for my escape from the, that courtroom. The greatest of Magnifique Grammarie's illusions are true art. Isn't, um... Can you prove that he didn't know? Without, like, using his word for it, you know? Evidence is everything in the trial. Or in, in the courtroom. It was all because someone gave Clavier uh, a tip about how there was gonna be uh, forged evidence in today's trial. So all he had to do was sit and wait for Phoenix to fall right into that trap. Have they, though? You're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> he does. The greatest of Magnifique Grammarie's illusions are true art. As such, they are well protected by this document. Only its bearer may perform his illusions on stage. Sounds like a pretty important thing to have if you're his disciple. As a rightful heir to his art, I too wanted a rightful heir. Rightful? I'm sure you know who I chose as my successor. Her daughter. That is why I have risked all to come here tonight. Brushel. Sir! Ah, here you go! It's the envelope. What's this? 
a letter passing the rights I have inherited to Trusi. I would have you sign here as a witness. But, but, I'm not a lawyer anymore. You need a public notary, besides. Ah, I may not look it, but I am a certified notary. Ah, okay. You are? By day, I wear a notary's, I wear a notary's glasses and hunt for news. Also by day, I wear a reporter's glasses and notarize. When I take off the glasses, I can't see very well. Okay. Your signature, please. This is the first reason I have come here tonight. That's what it is. Ah. I finally figured it out. Now I know why you've come out of hiding only now. It's been seven years, you said. Precisely. There's a law that covers your situation. After seven years, missing persons are considered to be legally deceased. So if someone was to vanish from the face of the earth seven years ago, they would lose all rights as a living person after seven years on that day. Not to mention all of their possessions. Exactly, which is why I am here. I risk showing my face in public for the sake of this document. Before my seven years are up, you might say I am securing my daughter's inheritance. But do you really need this document? Wouldn't Trusty inherit your estate automatically? Not in this case, I'm afraid. This case? Yes, I received the performance rights from Magnifique Grimmery. However, this was done in secret, without witnesses. Before Magnifique died, two potential successors to his repertoire were named. Myself, Sacre Marie, and Valent Grimmery. Not Trusy. I see, so you do need this document. I have known Brushel since before I vanished. He is a man I trust. Now only three know of my rebirth. I took the liberty of looking into Trusi's background and found you had no other close kin. It is as you say. Okay. I was kind of hoping he'd say something about the mother at this point. I know everyone else, but Trusi's mother is a mystery. This person in the photo is Trusi's mother. How did you come by this? Trusi showed it to me. She said her mother was gone. Then it is so. Huh? She is gone. What more is there to say? Um, lots? Ah, I know, I know. Oh, you're still here? According to my in-depth re research, Trusi's mother, Magnifique Marie's only daughter. End quote. What? Magnifi's daughter? Is that true, Mr. Sack? Brushel, you say too much. Eh? Eh? What? Why am I the bad guy? Why? Sack decked him. In any case, Mr. Wright, this discussion is over. Alessa Grammarie, she's the most mysterious of the whole lot. I need to gather me some more evidence, clearly. Well, the prelude may have been longer than the main attraction. Shall we begin our game? My final competition. Final? Why? As you said, I have come out of hiding today to make this document legally binding. Once that is done, I shall slip once more underground. Without seeing your daughter? It would be best if I did not. Seven years ago, he played. Seven years ago, I lost. I already lost to Magnifi. Do not care to lose to another. And I have heard that you never lose. It's just a rumor. Yes, for it is impossible to never lose unless one has an ace up one's sleeve. Fleur. <laughs> oh my god. As a magician, it causes me no end of ir irritation. To think a mere lawyer might be out there, pulling the wool over so many eyes. Hey, I just signed your document for you. Maybe you could try lightening up? That was that. This is this. 
For my final competition, I will destroy your perfect record, Phoenix Wright. This will be my final performance. You are warned. The sky is beyond serious. So much for a fun evening of cards. Brushel, you may leave. Oh, but it's your last game. I mean, what a scoop. I punch and I punch. But still, it, it is not enough. Uh, I just remembered a future uh, prior engagement. Toodles, gentlemen. Oh, and nice meeting you, piano man. Let us begin. Dealer. Duh. You will be witness to our competition. Duh. It is honor for me. Why haven't I seen her around here before? Ah, that reminds me. I saw a familiar face as I entered this restaurant. You did not seem to notice me, however. Gavin, I believe was his name. You know him? After a fashion. Listen, Phoenix Wright. One can learn much from a true competition. Remember this. The Grammarie power. I was close to understanding it, but I needed more. And I knew where to get it. Trucy's mother. I need to meet that reporter again. That was clear. Fuck! No! I didn't want to meet him again! And one other thing. From the moment my final competition with Zack began that night, a name was running through my head. The name of a man now in prison. A name Sacra Marie knew. But how? And why? Gavin. Interesting. Oh well, isn't this an unexpected surprise? That is a cell, yes. What errand brings you down to my cramped confines? Gavin. Is this your idea of revenge, Phoenix Wright? Revenge for the events that took away your attorney's badge seven years ago? My past is like my logic, straight and true. Nothing's changed. All I did was point the finger of justice in the proper direction. Fine. I'm glad we could have this little tete a tete, right? You look well, Phoenix Wright. You too, Gavin. Life has been full of surprises for both of us. I have no doubt you never expected to lose that attorney's badge of yours. And I'll bet you never expected to wind up here. Shady Smith was the name of the man you killed. Did you know who he really was? Who he was? Sacra Marie. You know, the defendant? I remember him, of course. You say Smith was Sac? Impossible. Don't even try to tell me it was a coincidence. What did I just say? Life is full of surprises. Don't you think? After that trial, you were arrested and found guilty. Interesting. But your motive was never made clear. A mistake I plan to remedy. You're not an attorney anymore, Phoenix writes. What possible conclusion do you think this investigation of yours can lead to? I killed a man named Smith with a bottle because I am an evil human being. Isn't that enough? Oh, for me, it isn't. I need to know why you did it, Gavin. You recall that case seven years ago? Ah, yes. The trial where Zach Grammary pulled his famous vanishing act. My brother won his fair share of praise and adoration for that trial, as I recall. Genius prosecutor reveals crooked attorney, was it? was when I met you, wasn't it? Was it now? The Bar Association Review Board voted unanimous, unanimously for the strictest punishment. Unanimous. Save for one dissenting opinion. Yours. It was my brother who was responsible for putting you in that position after all. For seven years, we've been friends. 
And yet, I still don't understand you. You're right, your friendship towards me was never pure. You suspected me then, as you still do now, don't you? Honestly, right now, I'm not sure what I think. You didn't just brain a guy with a juice bottle for no reason. Tell me why you did it. Persistent, aren't you? I came here because I remembered something. The night of your of our game, Sacra Marie mentioned your name, Gavin. Yeah, we just went through this. Gavin, I believe was his name, yeah. After that, he was killed and I asked you to help me. Because I remembered your kindness back when everyone had turned on me. I seemed to be in a bit of trouble. Something like that. Dead. Someone hit him. Hard. Me? Please. A cop should be here any minute. In your hands. Should it come to that? I have to know. Why did you kill Shady Smith? No. Sacra Marie! Whoa! I've never seen psyche locks like these. Dark. Cold. Full of despair. Can I even unlock these things? Something wrong, right? No, it's nothing. You shouldn't push yourself so hard. Life is to be taken easy, you know. He's doing his nails. You're thinking what self-respecting man would use nail polish? Not really. I know appearances are a big thing with you. You know what I say. One cannot live a beautiful life without beautiful nails. First rate in all things. Except nothing less. That certainly does look like first rate nail polish. I like the sparkly bottle. It's crystal. If you're so drawn to it, please, have one. It's on me. Envelope's been bothering me since I came in here. Now, who said something about a yellow envelope? It's not nice to peek at other people's na mail. You get mail here in jail? That I do, though they read it first, apparently. Still, I am allowed the pleasure of correspondence. Packages and the like are a different matter, however. Wait, I just realized this is, this is a solitary cell. Is this like a similar cell to what a Dogen was in? It seems kind of similar. Like the, the layout, you know? Hmm, looks like sneaking a peek is out of the question. To the past. Like I said, this this part of the game plays quite differently. Because you have to like go back and forth. I figured you'd come here sooner or later. I decided on sooner. Drew Misham, was it? I I haven't done anything illegal. <laughs> and I didn't come here to whine about past events. I wanted to ask you some questions. I suppose you have that right. That day, the entire court descended into chaos. Only you stood still, your eyes calmly watching. I admit, it made quite an impression on me. I'm used to finding myself in outrageous situations. Phoenix right, was it? I'll answer what I can. 
I'm not sure, but it feels like I'm being watched intensely. Ah, this is my daughter, Vera. Say hello. Tiny Vera. Oh my god. She's gone. Shall we begin then? Mm hmm. Judging from this place, you're a painter. Not, sadly, a profitable one. I have never sold a painting. It's a source of considerable embarrassment. I would be able to get by were it only me. Your daughter? Her mother grew weary of me and left. I don't want her to grow up needy, Mr. Wright. That is why I began my other occupation. Forgeries. Look at me with those eyes. I know what it is I what it is that I do. More than half of the paintings they bring me are stolen. Who knows what my copies are used for? But some of your works aren't paintings, correct? You may not believe me when I tell you this, but that was my first work, outside painting. What? To think it would be used as evidence in a murder trial. I never even imagined the possibility. Then why did you take the job? I was... well paid. Very well paid. I think he feels worse about it than, about it than I do. And the past is hard to escape. Honestly, the sooner I can put this behind me, the better. With apologies to you, of course. Sorry, but it's not going to be quite so easy. He's trying to forget what he made. Looks like I'll have to remind him. Your work. Don't try to pretend you've forgotten. Sure, all you did was make a copy. It sure seems like it. But that copy might have destroyed the life of an innocent man. But what is his motive? Why would he want to do that in the first place? I'm responsible too, which is why I have to know. And you have to tell me. I knew it would be difficult to escape this. And let's talk. Can I? Oh, I can. I'll just sidle on over here for a closer look. That's an awfully small frame. What's that inside it? A stamp? Oh, please don't touch that. I'll get in trouble. That stamp belongs to Vera, you see. She always puts it somewhere she can see it. That sack and valet. The grammaries, isn't it? post office issued that commemorative stamp last year, and the Grammarees were at the height of their popularity. Not anymore. Now that one of them has vanished off the face of the earth. Vera went to see one of their shows when she was quite small. She's been dedicated- she's been a dedicated fan ever since. She watched them every time- watched them every time they came on TV, until the end. I see. That stamp's quite hard to come by, I hear. I still wonder how she got her hands on it. That's a pretty bottle. Ah, don't touch that, please. I'll get in trouble. It belongs to Vera, you see. She always puts it somewhere she can see it. She looks at it often. There's a light pink fluid inside. Nail polish, I'm guessing. This red envelope. Ah, don't touch that. That's, uh, it's quite important. The painter's face just changed hues. I guess I'd better behave, though it's tempting to just grab it. Interesting. Anyways, I have to go in, um... Nope, wrong one. Well then, 
Ready to tell me about this work you did? It wasn't like anything I had attempted before. I guess it would be a little different from paintings. That is not what I mean. In all my previous work, it sufficed to create a copy. This wasn't a copy? The client gave me two things that day. The first was a sample page, as reference. The second, a printed document. I can only surmise what's written by my client. So you used the real writing as a reference to reproduce what the client wrote. Yes. As I said, it was my first job of that nature. So, who was your client? As I said in court, I do not know. Really? Even for such a suspicious, suspicious request? If it was me, I'd want to know as much as I could about the requester. I... I never met them. Not personally, I... Ah, a psyche lock, of course. It seems like you're still hiding something. Something about this work. Ha, <laughs> 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 <sighs> ah, okay. Let's hear it then. What are you hiding from me, Mr. Mishim? I'm sorry, but I really don't know. I never met the client. True, when I ask the client's name, there are no psychologues in sight. Regardless, you're hiding something. You have to be, otherwise it wouldn't make any sense. Hmm? Why are you doing this to me? Well, I've made my stand. No backing down now. So what's Misham hiding? The forger. I can pretty much piece together what it is from what you've said. What is it then? You told me what you knew about the client, and I couldn't see any psyche locks. Psycho locks? Is that some sort of asylum security or a new hairstyle, perhaps? And then they did show up, didn't they? Who was your client? As I said in court, I do not know. Really? Even for such a suspicious request, if it was me, I want to know as much as I could about the requester. I had never met them. Not personally. Not personally. Those words trigger the psyche lock. Again with the psycho locks. Now I really must know what they are. So you didn't meet with the clients. But someone else did. Maybe the real forger behind this evidence. Hmm. Perhaps I'm hung up on this lock business. I'm afraid you've lost me. Yeah, well, I didn't come here to talk about psyche locks. As long as I come to the right conclusion, it doesn't matter how I got there. And your conclusion is? The real forger behind this wasn't you, Mr. Mission. Puppycock! I don't know what you're talking about. That's my work, I tell you. Made here in my studio. Who else could it have been but me? That's the real question, isn't it? If the forger wasn't you... And I don't have many other people to choose from. The real forger at Drew Studios is... How old is she? 12. Well, that's right, she said she started when she was 12. The real forger is your daughter, Vera Misham, isn't it? Ridiculous! My daughter's only 12 years old, Mr. Wright. I've always been more... More one for landscapes, not surreal surrealism. Nice comeback, but you're shaking in your boots. Catch it now. The only two people with access to this studio are you and your daughter. The psyche locks tell me you are not the forger. Which makes your daughter the only possibility. Ahem. <clears throat> I feel very much on the verge of going psycho lock myself. I don't know how you knew, but you're right. The one who made this page was my daughter Vera, not I. She's only twelve, a genius might call her. A precocious little girl outshining her father. There's been a lot of that going around recently. I let her play in the studio, and she watched me. She taught herself in that way. The drafting tools and analytical devices I brought when they became I bought when they became necessary. My little girls play things now. 
Vera, do I detect a bit of fatherly pride? So Vera was the one who made this page. How did she know who the client was then? Actually, the client came once. Here, to the studio. What? Why didn't you say so sooner? But their face was covered. And they did not want to talk to me. So they talked to your daughter. They will speak only with the artist, the client told me. That little girl might know something about him. Okay. What do I do now? Maybe I should talk to her father a bit more. Or is it time to turn my attention to Vera? Uh... Mr. Misham, I have a request. Let me guess, you would like to speak with my daughter. Can I? My daughter has never been one to talk to strangers. She's quite shy, extremely so actually. With only one exception. Which was... Oddly enough, it was that client. They left the studio while they talked. They returned when they had finished. And she was laughing. It was the first time I'd seen anything of the sort. Please, let me speak with her. Alright. Uh oh, this could be tough. We just gotta show her a special interest and then... And then she will open right up. Vera autistic, maybe? I mean, that makes sense, right? Because, like, she, she struggles with communicating. She prefers, like, communicating through drawing. And then there's this. My stamp. Hey, she spoke. She can talk. Yeah, so this stamp. Gonna keep her talking. Isn't Troop Grammarie amazing? Huh? Hmm? Yes? Oh. I especially like those two, Sack and Valent. I mean, they're uh, just so magical. So many neurodivergent people in Ace Attorney. For real. Even though, like, they're not necessarily, like, confirmed. Like, their, their personalities and, like, just the way that they act, you know? It says so much. Like, they're certainly coded in such a way. Aren't they? Aren't they? Yeah, this is, this is totally autistic behavior. <laughs> yeah. Whenever I go to one of their shows, I'm like, Whoa, magic, you know? Me too! Me too! I love them! They're so cool! It's like... like magic! Yeah! Alright, she's talking. Not saying much, but it's a start. I went and saw them with Father the other day. The opening ceremony at the Grammarie Museum of Magic. The Grammarie Museum? They have one of those? I guess it makes sense now that they have their own commemorative stamp. So, have you been to one of their shows? Just once, when I was little. With father. The grammar is on stage. It was like a dream. Disappearing, reappearing, cutting apart, putting back together. They do it all. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you can keep telling me stuff like this. You know, about Zack and Valent, maybe? I know, right? Oh, well, I'm sure. Alright, better get asking before she changes her mind. outside much. I like to paint in here. She's so cute. I can't. Why don't you like the outside? There's bad people out there. Well, true, but there are lots of good people, too. Actually, I should tell you. She was almost kidnapped once. Yeah, that, that does it. That... That would make sense. K kidnapped? Since then, she's been... Well, you can see for yourself. She refuses to leave the house. I see. Wait. That doesn't make sense. She said she went to the Grammarie Museum. With you, in fact. Ah, yes, actually. She was quite insistent on it. Much to my surprise. Special interest. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, 
That was the first and last time she expressed such a desire to me. Oh my god. For sure. The person gave me a good luck charm. A good luck charm? For when I absolutely had to go outside. Yes, apparently she received something. A gift. From that client, actually. She won't tell me what it was. Father, I told you to keep that a secret. From that client, huh? This I have to hear about. No, tell me about... Gamarie first. They're the best in the world! Huh? Oh, you mean Troop Gamarie? Of course! Father gave it to me. Your father? But... I asked him about it. He didn't know how you got it. Oh. Oh, um, I guess I just took it. Yeah. Took it? Father got a letter. From that person. That person? You mean that letter was from the client? Oh, we talked about the Grammaries forever that day. I'm sure that's why I was sent that stamp. I didn't want to just send it back, so I took it. They're a sneaky one, this client. So they were trying to get on her good side. But that mean, must mean that whoever that fucking client was, they wanted to kill a 12-year-old! Hello? <laughs> So your father tells me you're good at painting all sorts of things. I really like painting. A lot. Father is always very happy when I paint them exactly the same. So you did this too? Oh, yes. That was my first job. Your first? All I used to do was paint the same thing I saw. But this was totally different. The pen slips and the way the writer held the pen and the pressure on the nib. I had to use a microscope and analyze it on the computer. She seems happy. Odd. Her work was the last nail in the Grammarie coffin. I guess no one told her. So, you met the person that asked you to do this job. And you talked to them. Was this about a good luck charm you received? I can't talk about it. Eh? If I do, it won't work anymore. That's what I was told. Yeah, but I really, really have to know. Right, time to do some psyche unlocking. Ah, hello. Good evening. Okay, where am I? Okay, yeah, I just got out. You seem to trust this client quite a lot, in fact. Because they gave you the stamp? No, that's not why. They listened to me, to my problem. The problem keeps you inside all the time. Don't go outside if you don't want to. That's what they told me. But when I absolutely have to go out, all I had to do was use a good luck charm. A good luck charm? Your client gave you? I think I know what your client might have given you, actually. Is this your good luck charm? I fucking know it's a nail polish. Pop polish? Polish, I can't speak. This was what they gave you, wasn't it? Huh? The same bottles over there on your desk. Your good luck charm, right? I heard once cosmetics were once thought to ward off evil. This is a magic bottle. It has the power. Huh, of course it, it does. So it's like a comfort item. She's totally autistic! 100%! I'll just refrain from commenting anymore on that one. I think I know who gave you that bottle, actually. The one who asked you to do this job. Was this the client? Apollo Justice. Who the fuck is this? I don't know, it's just some kid. <laughs> this man. He's a friend of mine. 
Know him? His name is Christoph Gavin. He's a lawyer, actually. I, I promised. I promised not to tell. You're so cute. I can't. Oh. They what? I'm sorry, I can't talk about the client, I promise. And if I break my promise, the spell won't work. I don't need a name anymore. I've got my answer. You're pretty confident in this charm, then. I think he might be the devil. Huh? Or maybe an angel. What do you mean? I saw it. Or I think I saw it. And they gave me this. I saw the devil's face. Are you saying the client's face looked like the devil's? No, the client was gentle. With a gentle smile. So where to see this devil then? It was so quick. I don't remember well. But that's when I knew. That person wasn't like other people. That's why I believe in my good luck charm. I'm not sure what this devil she saw was. But it's pretty clear that Christoph Gavin has her charmed. Well, I think that's all. I'll be leaving now. I'm sorry for what happened. If you want to apologize, try my client, Sacra Marie. Um, did I do something bad? What makes you think that? Your eyes, they're sad. Very sad. Put on my smile next time I come, promise. I hope to see you smile then too, Vera. Oh, okay. She's so cute. I can't, she's so cute. Take care, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Looking back on my first encounter with the young forger, I witnessed something of vital importance that day. Of course, by the time I realized it, it was already too late. I'm tempted to grow up my hair just so I can cosplay Vera. <laughs> okay, only the attention center left from seven years ago. Sweet. Oh boy, there's still so much left. We're almost two hours in. What a strange sight doth mine eyes behold. What strange sight doth mine eyes behold? Excuse me? Two men on either side of a single transparent pane. Yet it seems fickle fate has switched sides, so to speak. The forger of figs walks freely, while the innocent languishes within these flexiglass confines. There has been no proof that I forged anything, nor proof that I took the life of my dear mentor. I mean, if you see someone dead, would you A, tell someone, hey, there's been a murder, or two, Shoot the clown. <laughs> I'm just saying. Someone's been shot square in the forehead. Would you stay behind, shoot the clown? Or say, I think someone may be dead. They've been shot in the forehead. I'm just saying. It's pretty clear cut. That his statement doesn't fucking line up. It doesn't... Uh, it pisses me off. <laughs> Yet, these chains cannot hold me for long. The stage awaits. And what, may I ask, awaits you? A little piano and a cold little hole in the wall. But since you are here, what shall we discuss? The shooting of Magnifique Grammarie, for one. Who pulled that trigger? Valent? Or his partner, Zack? His partner vanished before the answer could be found. If I'm going to get any closer to the truth, this is the place to start. I have to hand it to my partner. He knows how to make an exit. That's talent. Yes, he made my attorney's badge disappear, and he never even touched it. 
Glory's spotlight always leaves someone weeping in the shadows. Yet his very disappearance is itself a revelation. Revealing what? Sacra Marie killed Magnifi. It's as good as a designed as a signed confession. It's certainly been public as public opinion's take on it. I grow tired of my cage. And the time of my release is near. I must go and prepare. Planning on jumping back into the magic into the magic right away? As long as an audience waits with bated breath, there will be Valent. And also Yes. Now that my partner has disappeared, Magnifi's repertoire is mine. Valent killed killed Valent? You mean Magnifi? Valent Garmarie has a tradition to uphold. Is that true? Seen in this light, the trial was quite good to me, verdict or no. And you can't pay for that kind of publicity. It's okay. My brain works like that, too, sometimes. Yeah. The suspicion on you hasn't lifted entirely, Valent. After all, you received one of those letters, too. You were just as obligated to follow Magnifi's instructions as your partner. So I was, but only Sacra Marie followed them. Let us not speak anymore of who shot what. Now that my partner has vanished, the question is moot. I still don't understand his logic. Like, <sighs> If he says he, he shot the clown, there is no way he did because he was the second one and you just wouldn't shoot the clown. If you already saw that someone had been shot. But that means that this bitch, like, saw the clown. So they were shot in the forehead and he was like... Bye, bitch. <laughs> I'm more interested in learning something else, actually. What might that be? I want to know what Magnifi had up its uh, ha, had up his sleeve. How could he coerce you and your partner to kill him? The trick up his sleeve. <laughs> Perhaps you do not know. You know what? A great magician never reveals his secrets. Ah, sweet. I didn't think it would be that easy. The audience must remain forever in the audience. Bathing in the reflected glow of the spotlight. Okay, sweet. I'm flying by the seat of my... I'm flying by the seat of my pants on this one. There must be a path leading from the evidence to the truth. And that's what I'm going to find. To ask someone to take a life... Even one not long for this world. Yeah, they really said you're getting you're getting the, the psyche locks. And it's gonna be this entire chapter, just psyche lock after psyche lock lock after psyche lock. <laughs> I don't know. Um There was a strange sound. Sorry, um, I don't know what kind of, like, power I prefer so far, because we have, um, we have this Psyche Locks, uh, we have Logic, <laughs> and we have the, the Mind Chess, and we have the, uh, Perception Bracelet. I don't know, I, I really, I really like the Perception one, actually. It's just so nice to, like, look around and, like, look for, like, tiny little tells. Though the... Sorry, logic chest, that's what it was called, sorry. Huh. The logic chest is also kind of cool, though. I just don't like the time limit, it's so stressful. 
It's asking someone to commit murder. Yes, our mentor was fond of dramatic moves and dramatic fina finales. And he got his wish. His life was taken. What weakness could be so powerful as to coerce someone into committing murder? Yeah, I know. I don't know how I feel about those, though. Or is there only, like, one more, isn't there? I guess there probably is something in Digact and Saibon as well, but uh, I don't know. I haven't played them yet. I really want to. There have been some rumors, though, that something is going to get announced in April. But who the fuck knows? Also, it's, it's the 20th anniversary, right? Of his attorney. Yeah, it is, because it came out in 2001. So it would make sense for them to release a new game. So I'm just saying that I couldn't I couldn't start replaying these games at a more perfect time. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Anyways, what weakness could be so powerful as to coerce someone into committing murder? I guess as it was a matter of life or death. Care to explain? Your troop lived in a world of showmanship. The flashier, the better. And flashy so often means danger, doesn't it? Let us make this as painless as possible. If you have proof of this danger, show it. Why? That's one of ours. Specially designed for your show, I gather. A single bullet, one shot. What are you suggesting? Um... I don't think there's, like, the only mobile game there is is, like, the, the Trilogy um, Investigations 1 and Apollo Justice. I believe those are the only ones that are re released on the mobile. On the, on the mobile, okay. On mobile, that's what I meant. And Investigations 1 only has the logic feature. The second one has a logic chess, as well as a logic. And logic chess is a lot of fun. Just because you can fucking read the options that you have, and like, one of the characters is like crying and you can just be like, yeah, you'll, you'll never amount to anything, you fucking suck. You little piss baby. <laughs> you can, uh, just the fact that you can like, be like really mean, I mean, not that it will get you anywhere. But it's just like the fact that you can do it. I never, I never could do it though. At least not this time. What are you suggesting? We are magicians, Mr. Wright, not murderers. I'm not crying murder, Mr. Valens. I am crying something far more tragic. An accident. Second Valens quick draw shooter. How long has it been since those shots were last heard? Must the shoot him cancel because someone might get hurt? Of course. What other reason could there be? Well, it could have been cancelled because someone had already been hurt. I don't think so. Like, the only other thing I can think of is the, uh... Oh god, what's it called? The, uh... Camp Win game. But I don't even know where the hell you could play that. <laughs> I don't know if it's like on uh, on mobile or if it's like a, at an actual like not arcade, but it's like pachinko. There is like this pachinko game kind of thing, but the animations are so good. Like I keep like seeing like videos from it on YouTube. Oh damn! But tell me, what can you prove with a single pistol? What did you say? My costume for forging friend. That's what he said. Well, tell me what would have happened if there had been an accident. What if one of your bullets took a life on stage? The performance of magic is not concerned with what-ifs. It is concerned with precision. Precisely whom do you claim we shot? Looks like I've chosen the right path. Let's just hope he walks with me. 
Her life was sacrificed so that the show might go on. And this shows who it was. Lock it, lock it, lock it! But, but that's... Get wrecked, bitch. Ugh. Sacra Marie's wife and Trucy's mother. Is there another one in that? I mean, technically, I guess. Huh. Yeah, I, I, I was, I was thinking of Spirit of Justice too, but like, I wasn't like really sure if I would consider that a power or not. It's just, like, a, a different way to do it, I guess. But I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I was thinking of that, too, but I just wasn't sure if, like, would call it a power, but... Technically? I don't know. Halasa, I believe her name. was her name? I'm like, Gazoo! But how can you say this? How can you say she was struck by one of her bullets? Still in denial, Mona. Laza was at the greatest risk of being shot. And this clearly shows just how much danger she was in. Troop Grammarie's performances were very, very popular. So popular, they even made a commemorative stamp at the height of your frame. Fame, not frame, fame. <laughs> we were not merely the latest craze. We were an age, a golden age. It's all here on this stamp. There's Salasa, yes? Trucy's mother is missing, I hear. What happened to her? I don't know! A part of his memory is still locked up. There's one thing you're failing to address. What's that? As you say, our troop was a world unto itself. If our leader, Magnifi, was so inclined, he could hide anything he wished with ease. I will play it. I mean, I'm gonna do, uh... Dual Destinies first. But I will play Spirit of Justice. Hey, 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 hey. We do not, we do not support emulators around here, all right? <laughs> Let me just get this straight. We do not support emulators around here. <laughs> not the weakers. Absolutely not. Oh, this, uh, I just have it plugged into my, uh, my, my DS. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, did, didn't you know you could- <laughs> No, never. No, of course not. Ah, but Mr. Wright. Then he would have hit a crime, making him an accomplice. Not a great foundation for blackmail. Alan's got a point. If one of the troop members died in an accident and Magnifi covered it up, his innocence would come into question. Found the right address, Mr. Wright. I'm so close. There has to be something. About how Talas is dead. De dead death could affect sacking Valen's relationship with Magnifi. Oh yeah, of course. Of course it does. I see in your eyes, you still have something to say. How can you possibly prove more than you already have? I'll prove I tell us this accident tied your hands so completely. With a person. It's going to take a little knowledge of the players to crack this one. The accidental death of Sack's wife tied both your hands. And this information proves why Magnifi held so much power over you. Nope, wrong one. Sorry.
Uh, yeah, there's this button you can like press to like speed up your 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 Diaz. Like it's it's so useful. Oh <laughs> uh, god. Uh, person, there we go. It wasn't a question of who shot the Lassa. The Lassa herself was the problem. What do you mean? She was Sacra Marie's wife, Trucy's mother, and Magnifique Grammarie's only daughter. It was a terrible accident, and the two of you killed your mentor's only daughter. If that wasn't the key to Magnifique's power over you, I don't know what was. It, it was... It was an accident! Sweet. There's no proof. None at all. That Talasa went missing. And your mentor blackmailed both of his disciples. It doesn't take a genius to put one and one together. Ours was a complex family. You mean Troop Grammarie? The master, Magnifique Grammarie, his only daughter. And his two disciples. It does sound like a recipe for disaster, doesn't it? Do not be tempted into faulty flights of fancy. There was an accident. But that is all it was. An accident. Sack and Valence tore the force. The guns blaze. The bullets fly straight toward that beautiful body on stage. And then crash, zing, pow, into everything but her. Now that is magic. It happened one day when we were practicing. Same trick with a new twist. And tragedy. Yes, it is in the eShop. Have you played the uh, a crossover game with Professor Layton, by the way? But as for whose bullets stole Talasa's life, we shall never know the answer. Talasa disappeared from our lives, and Sack was bereft of his wife. Trucy lost her mother, and Magnifi, his daughter. No, it's not on Switch. And that led to blackmail, I take it. If it was available on Switch, don't you think I would play it on the Switch? Huh. <sighs> It was different? Okay. I haven't played it yet, so I'm saving that one for last because I've played all the other ones. And led to blackmail, I take it. It is all part and parcel of the darkness that comes when the curtain falls. Why did Magnifique Grammarie try to cover up the accident? It was his own daughter who died! All I can say is, it was a critical time for Troop Grammarie. A passing of the torch from Magnifique to Second Valent. We all sacrificed so that it might be a success. Palace's death was the greatest sacrifice of all. Yet, even when her life was extinguished, her presence was not. What do you mean? In time, we, myself and Zack, found we could no longer oppose Magnifique's wishes. Magnifique forced us to perform his art for his benefit. I see. I guess I can understand. I mean, he did lose his only daughter. But do you not find cowardice in his actions? Huh? To decide to hide the truth of your own daughter's death is one thing. But then to hang that death as a guillotine above our heads. Oh, I want to watch the live action so bad. I haven't watched it yet. Things were dark behind the scenes in Troop Grammarie, that's for sure. Does Trucy know? She was not told, naturally. Who would want to know that their father might have taken their mother's life? True. I had not thought of that accident for a very long time. I'm sorry to dredge up old memories, but this has helped a lot. Not to find Magnifique's slayer, I should think. True. Ah. After that accident. There was one who came sniffing quite persistently. A reporter? 
He called himself a newsman at the time. Often I spied him lurking about the dressing room doing his research. Do you happen to remember his name? What was his name? Sorry, I have forgotten. But in the course of his interviewing, he became quite close to my partner, Zack. I liked him not. I see. His name, I do not recall. But his scent, the cloying aroma of mint, yeah, it's brushel for sure. Yes, whenever he smiled, which was far too often. I see. Thanks for your help. It does no good to interfere with the past, Mr. Wright. We will not uncover answers, only wounds. I'm sorry. I have begun to notice a dark curtain hanging over Troop Carmarie. And I began to realize what I had to do. I had to protect Trucy from the darkness. The reporter he mentioned. The newsman. I never learned who that was at the time. Though I've got a pretty good idea who it is now. That smile and the sickly sweet smell of mint. The last floss thin thread connecting Sacra Marie to this world. Sooner or later, I'd have to track him down. Studio. Eh? Well, well, well. What do we have here? Remember me? Of course I remember you. Journalist meets ex-attorney and bar. End quote. Can I ask what you're doing here? Mr. Mission was poisoned and his daughter's... Oh yes, I know. Oh, I know. Oh, how I know. Yes. It's cost me no end of grief, to be honest. Journalist wishes he'd track down case just a little quicker. End quote. Are you on the trail of this case the whole time? Zach Amory was a good friend. Zach said something to that effect back at the Borscht Bowl Club. What a character. What a man. If a little, no. A lot, no. Extremely rough around the edges. Do you think I could ask you a few questions? Oh? You serious? I mean, I'm usually the interviewer, not interviewee. Journalist asks questions, not the other way around, end quote. Fine, shoot, I don't care. People have been asking me all sorts of things re lately. Okay. It was tragic what happened to Drew Misham and his daughter. Okay, thank god I don't have to fucking look at his face ever again. I hope, anyways. <laughs> Forgery is a serious crime, and they pay the price. You know what really did them in, though, don't you? Yes, a forged diary page. The night I interviewed him. I found out something about Mr. Misham I hadn't known. What's that? You know, he always felt like he was being watched. Every day, for seven years. No saviers, potatoes of ice, end quote. Being watched? You mean he felt guilty? No, oh, no, I'm not talking about feelings here. You know, I felt watched too. The whole time I've been on this case, no less. The journalist gets tingling sensation on back of neck, freaks out, end quote. Because you felt guilty? Why would I feel guilty? You felt like you were being watched, huh? I wonder what it all means. Drew Misham felt like he was being watched. And you along with him. You sure it wasn't just nerves? Nerves? No, it's not. It's nothing so mundane. I stopped paying attention to my nerves a long time ago. But I felt it too. Journalist sure he is being watched. End quote. Don't you wonder why Zach Grammary got rubbed out after seven years? Right after coming into contact with me. He completely vanishes from that courtroom. Then, for seven years, he talks to no one. Not a soul. And just as the remaining time was almost up. He contacts me in order to have this made. And then, he dies. Starting to put the pieces together, are we? And you were being watched this whole time. Maybe not just me. Maybe you were too. Me? I met Zack through that case, actually. You mean the shooting of Magnifique Grammarie? No, before that. 
It's not widely known. You mean... The accident. During the quick draw shooting practice. My, my, my. You're well informed. You should have seen me back then. I dug up quite the scoop. I wanted it all. Money, fame, women, a little puppy. All for me. I was younger then. And my days of night smelled of fresher mint than they do now. Alan Garry did mention one particularly nosy, report nosy reporter. In fact, I was on close speaking terms with Magnifique Grammarie at the time. I knew his daughter too, of course. Thalassa, was it? Really? Then Thalassa disappeared, quite suddenly at that. And Magnifique wouldn't say a word about it. Yeah, my evil habit got the better of me. The journalist catches scent of a scoop. Goes on feeding frenzy. End quotes. Instead of a one-on-one -on -one interview with Thalassa's husband, see? Sacre Marie. Something strange was in the air over at Troop Grammarie in those days. The whole scree mentor controlling disciples scene started by then, I'm guessing. Alessa, she was part of it all, right? Come on, you can tell me, off the record. Sorry, I don't know. Anyway, I kept prying and eventually became friends with Zack. Sure, he punched me once or twice or five times, but over time, he came to see me as his confidant. He's been waiting his whole life, whole, this whole time. Seven years, huh? Waiting? For his big comeback, of course. A big revival of the Magnifi Miracle. Of course it was all a dream. Because of this. Performance rights. In the absence of any other official documents, he was golden. Let's just say the old man didn't give his rights to both Zack and Valant. So Valant waited until Zack died, legally at least. The time finally comes, and Valant's like a kid on Christmas morning. He's getting ready for his show at the Sunshine Coliseum, you know. And that document sees a legal light of day. It's going to put a bit of a damper on the big show. He's a sorry one, like Valant Grammarie. Must out to his partner at work, and in love too. Love? It's the same old story, really. Two disciples and their mentor's only daughter. One has three sides and all of them pointy. Love triangle. I mean, um... The phrase... <laughs> this, this, is, this is just gonna be, like, really fucking weird. And I'm just gonna go off on this for, like, a, a few minutes. But a love triangle, to me, it doesn't make any sense. Because to, to make a triangle... Like, you need three angles. But, like, what we consider a love triangle is actually just, like, an angle. Like, one singular angle. <laughs> yeah, exactly! Because, like, we always, like, think of, a, like, a love triangle where it's, like, a uh, person A and person B, both, like, person C. But to make it a triangle, it has to go full circle. So, A likes person uh, C, and B likes person C. One of them, one of A and B have to like the other. For it to be a triangle, like, technically speaking. Anyways. Hmm. That is pretty classic. You're in a performing troupe. That's your world. Always have been. <laughs> it's like family. One with an entire high school's worth of drama, intrigue, and backstabbing. And in the middle of all this... Talasa has Trusi. And then she dies. I need to find out more about this Talasa. Mr. Brushel? Do you know this person? Do I know that person? Of course! I was friends with Zack, after all. He hit me a few times. Five times, actually. He kept count. Love that for him. But still, I never forget his wife. Talasa Grammarie. Magnifique Grammarie's only daughter. Do you think you could tell me more about her? Well, 
Oh, why the heck not? Sweet. So, Alasa married Sack and had Trucy, see? It was her second marriage, actually. It means she was divorced. I hadn't heard this one before. Not quite. Her late husband was a performer, too. He died in an accident on stage. Tragic, really. He had only been married one year. I didn't know. Ah, but she was a beauty. I still carry a portrait photo of her around, you know. I've known Trucy since she was a little thing, too. She got the better deal, really. She's got you for family, after all. What do you mean? Just reminiscing, you know. Alessa has another child besides Trucy. End quote. What? But, but Trucy said she was an only child. Ah, yes, this one she had with her previous husband. Her previous husband? Her first hus husband who died on stage? Yep, they had themselves a kid. Another orphan now. There's another one who slipped through the cracks. No idea where they are now. Talasa had another child? Do you think I could borrow that photo? Sure. I can be generous on occasion, you know. I won't need this locket anymore. Better returning to Trucy before I forget. People and events all get tangled together and get biggerer and biggerer. Don't you think? I was too busy wondering about biggerer to listen to what you were saying. Sometimes, you just gotta accept that you won't be able to untangle it all, I think. Maybe so, but still. I have to do what I can. And I have to tell what I find to those who come next. Next, you say? I'm not the one who will close the curtain on this little play. Apparently, it's not my role anymore. Magnifi! I was just wondering what Magnifi would think about this. What do you mean? Haven't you seen it in Trucy? She's got his power. You mean how I can't lie to Trucy? It was the same with Magnifi. And with his daughter, Elasa. It's a strange thing. You think it's some grammar gene? Magnifi told me once, back when Sack married to Lassa. He said Sack had good eyes. But not good like a grammarese eyes. Not that good. I wonder if Sack ever played a game of poker with his wife. Who knows what the grammarese secret was. Maybe nobody, now that Sack's gone. Sack grammarese. plot had finally begun to reveal itself. It sprouted from a warp in the grammary fabric and grew, swallowing everything, wrapping itself around the grammary's power. A power which passed from Magnifi Grammarie to Thalassa to the next generation. And I would once again need to meet. one who bridged it all together. Nice, that's the first one of those. Back here we go. Let's go. I have to know more about this power of Trucy's. It's like she can see right into people's minds. The first time I saw her do it, it blew mine. And after you were done having your mind blown, you took her to play cards with you. Uh, gotta use the resources at hand, I always say. Yet, I myself have no such power. But Trucy does. Why's that? Maybe Trucy got her power from her mother, Alessa Grammary. I will not speak of that. The last side is officially missing, correct? And I think I know why you don't want to talk about her. Gun. The three of you were a team once. Not that the entire country doesn't already know this. At your peak, 
you were the biggest stars around. Yet, there's another story behind the fame. One that not many know. Talaza lost her life during a rehearsal. To you and Valent Grammarie's bullets. It was an accident. It wasn't me. How could I shoot my dear Talasa? I'm sure Valent would say the same thing. Why, it's just like another murder I might mention. Damn you. Her eyes. I love Talasa's eyes. To think they could read my mind. It's frightening. Yet there was a warmth in them that felt like an embrace. She is dead, and Magnifi Grammarie has joined her. So the only one with her power left now is Trucy? Mr. Zack. I do not know. I don't need any power to see through that one, buddy. So there's someone else, someone other than Trucy. Someone who inherited Thalassa's power. Ha! <laughs> How would I know? My chances are slim. It would take a miracle to learn the truth. Or maybe one has already occurred. There's someone else with a power. And I know who. What were you saying? This... This boy. His name is... I forget. Something weird. Who could he be? An attorney. A attorney. I noticed him when I went to visit a friend's law offices. So what are we to make of this, oh great ex-attorney? You can show me pictures of strange boys all you like. But you could at least say something like, I'm this boy. I could he... I could use a laugh. Perhaps you wouldn't laugh if you knew the facts. This might not be 100% proof, but it's close. There's a link between this boy and Thalassa. Actually, it's more of a ring. A ring. Perhaps this will refresh your memory. I just so happen to have evidence showing this missing link. Bracelets, anyone? Actually, I know something. Your marriage to Talasa was her second. How did you know this? Her first husband. He died a year after they were wed, yes? He was a performer. They met when he joined us, Grammaris, as a guest on our show. After Thalassa wed him, she left the troupe for a while. And you say she had a child then? I have a photograph over here. I couldn't help notice what she was wearing when I first saw this. Those bracelets stand out. They are a Grammarie family heirloom. This boy wears a bracelet. Just like the ones in the picture. So, that's why. Why what, Mr. Sack? I took this photograph of Talasa before she left us. She returned. Listen, I already know what's happening. And I'm... I, I'm having... I'm getting goosebumps for some reason. I don't know, I love this part so much. When she returned. She wore only one bracelet. I bet I know where that other one went. She gave it to this boy, her son. Oh boy, this strange power. I myself do not know from where it comes. Yet the fact is that it, that it is passed down from the Grammarie line. It runs in their ve veins. Welcome to the family, you are right now. <laughs> Didn't I say? Did I not say adoption? Honestly. And I've been like calling them like siblings all this time as well. Kind of like as a joke, haha, -ha, but also because... Haha. -ha. <laughs> you know? Orphanage time! Hell yeah! Huh. <sighs> what is it? I asked her. Alasa, once. This is what she told me. Her power responds to tension in others. I know. They have, like, the perfect, like, uh, sibling, um, energy. 
No, that's not not the word I'm, I'm thinking of. Anyways, like, their conversations are, like, very, like, sibling. <laughs> you know, they sound like siblings. Synergy? Maybe. I don't know. I'm not quite sure what, what I was act actually looking for, but I know it wasn't energy. So, maybe. I don't fucking know. Tension. Chemistry! I think that's it. Yes! If she were to face a person, and they become tense, even slightly, then she would know, no matter how hard they tried to keep hide it from her. So she could see it. Not quite. And this is the strangest part of it all. She wouldn't realize that she was subconsciously detecting this ten tension. Without the use of a particular object, or in her case, objects. Objects? Wait, are they something she wore? Yes, her bracelets. I admit the first time I saw one of those, I felt there was more to it than just fashion. The siblings are weird. But what kind of power could a bracelet have? I have made a decision. I will tell you all I know. Consider it a gift. Well, I hardly need you to tell me this at this point. But these two are brother and sister, yes. And the brother too has this power of theirs. So Trucy has an older brother. I wonder what will come of that. Mr. Wright, tonight, after our game is done, I will return to a life of hiding. I would not see her live her life without knowing. I understand. I'll tell the two of them when the time is right. I am in your debt, once again. No kidding. What I want to know is how all this got to be so messed up. Those bracelets are made of a special alloy. It is set to expand and shrink very slightly in response to bod body warmth. So they're temperature sensitive or something. Yes. This is how they can shrink to the exact size of their wearer's wrists. And this has something to do with their power? What have I told you? The Grammarie power reacts to tension in others. When the Grammarie senses tension, they too become tense. Like a mood ring? Oh my god. Oh wait, is that where they got that? Okay. Interesting. Interesting. And this tension translates into minute cont contractions of the muscles. So, so minute, they cannot sense it on their own. The muscles. Oh, so that's what the bracelets are for. The bracelet on. One can say, sense these contractions, because the bracelet is always a perfect fit. So when the person they're watching gets tense, the bracelet feels tighter on their wrists. Precisely. This witness is lying! <laughs> oh my god. That alone doesn't really count as mind reading. I believe I understand how the process works from here- from there. It's a simple question of eyesight. Eyesight? I guess that sounds simple enough. Have you ever heard of kinetic vision? Something about the ability to see moving objects with full clarity, right? Aw, oh, that's perfectly fine. I hope you sleep well. And I'll hope to see you next stream. I've heard of it before. They say athletes can see a moving ball like it is stopped if they focus. Oh, but it's not confined to sports alone. It all relies on the ability to focus. When we focus, we can see many things. The faintest twitch of the face and the meaning that lies behind it. Therein lies one of the secrets of magic. Good night. One must know the mind of a crowd before one may distract it. So basically what you're saying is, the Grammarese can see really well. 
For them, seeing is more than believing. It is knowing. Their power relies on eyesight, combined with exceptional focus. Things are starting to come into focus for me too. Of course, it is difficult to maintain such levels of focus for any length of time. You have 30 30 vision. <laughs> but what if someone could tell you when to focus? Or something? Precisely. But wait, Trucy doesn't have any bracelets. You are talking about poker, yes? The timing of when to focus is so elementary. She probably does it without thinking. I doubt Trucy herself has realized this. That is all I know of. No, of things, Grammarie. Thank you, Mr. Sack. If this boy's bracelet is the real thing, then he will use it before long, thereby awakening his power. I'll keep that in mind. Well, shall we play a game? Ah, I've said so much. Let me say one more thing. I will tell you of that night. That night? The night my mentor, Magnifi Grammarie, passed away, passed from this world to the next. There were two pistols and two letters sent. This was Magnifi's test. Test? In his last years, Magnifi Grammarie worked us to the bone. No, to the pain. But that night, I could not shoot him. So I shot the clown's forehead instead. This, it seems, was the correct answer. Take this. I give my art to you, Zack. What? It is thanks for playing along with my show. You shot well tonight, Zack. Though I would not have minded dying by your hand. How could I shoot you? You're my mentor. Ha! Huh. I thought you might say that. If I went home without shooting anything, what would you have done then? Then of course I would have given Valent his chance. And if I had shot you in the forehead instead, and it will be over. If you are valent or to shoot me in the head, then I to the darkness would go and my art with me. A fitting end, don't you think? Ah. Yet this ending too gives me no cause for regret. I thank you, Sack. What I don't really get though is that could they not just like um you know do the like the, the scribbly text like the scribbly test on like the other side of the book because it would probably like emboss through the paper right so it would like it would mark like the page behind it unless the pages were like really thick for some reason i doubt it <laughs> and i am sorry i have done much that was wrong in my day pop snow braining game of course It seems to me that Magnifi wanted you to be a successor all along. That's why the time he gave you was earlier than Valance. Perhaps, but it is not something we will ever know for sure now. I wonder, what is Valant up to these days? Waiting for you to die. If seven years pass like this, the performance rights go to him. Ah. And now here I am, and his dream is ended. It's worse than that, actually. Public opinion's a fickle thing, you know. What? You don't mean to tell me they've put the blame for our mentor's death on him. The trial ended when you vanished, Mr. Zack. There were even rumors that Valent had helped you pull, pull it off. That's madness! Well, it seems that before I can once again disappear from this world, I have one more act to perform. Isn't it odd that sorting out my life should prove so complicated, even though I'm dead? That night, Sacra Marie was killed. He died as Shady Smith, a mysterious traveler with a secret past. When he left one thing behind before he parted, this. His confession. To use as I saw fit. Oh. 
To whom it may concern, seven years past, I, Zach Grammarie, murdered my mentor, Magnifi Grammarie. I apologize for the trouble caused by my sudden departure from court and hereby confess to my crime, Zach Grammarie. Oh. Of course, he'd killed no one. This was his way of tying up loose ends with his old partner, Valent Grammarie. But that means that already before the game started, Phoenix knew who Apollo was. Well, this is a blast from the distant past. Long time no see, Mr. Valent. Seven years, has it been? Frankly, I didn't think I'd ever see you again. Actually, I came because there's something I want to ask you. I've spoken to the press. I have nothing more to say. I have spoken to a lot of people myself, and come to some conclusions. But then I realized... I needed to hear it from you. I have walked a diff difficult road these past seven years. Because you couldn't perform Magnifi's repertoire? Do not be deceived! Valen's skill is the real deal. I do not require my mentor's hand-me-downs. No, it was my partner who slowed me on my way. Sacra Marie. This rather well-performed disappearing act seven years ago was the end. Or so I thought. Sacra Marie murdered our... Sakamari murdered our mentor and flew, fled to escape punishment for his crime. You said something to that effect seven years ago, didn't you? I remember it as if, as if it were only yesterday. Yet, that was not the way of it in the end. But while he vanished, the suspicious upo suspicions upon my own person never did. His partner, Zack, vanished to protect him. That's what those thieving magpies of a press said. I had no idea. Yet yeah, that very same press comes to me now, feigning interest. They cover the greatest magic show in history, as if it were vaudevillian. Distraction. And here must I stand, smiling at them all. What am I, if not a player in some fiendish farce? Might I suggest it's because you never made it clear what happened? Magnifi's death is still a mystery to this day. Which is why I came here to get the answer from you. You might be seeing these sooner or later. The audience has no business stepping upon the stage. They must be content to sit sit and stare at the spotlight. That sounds an awful lot like something I heard seven years ago. Hmm. Ask what you will, you will get nothing from me. I am as much a part of this affair as you are now. I have to know what happened. Like I said, this chapter is long. I've already been here for like two and a half hours. And I'm not quite done yet. I'm like a tiny bit left of this chapter only. For seven long years, I have endured. Now finally, the curtain lifts on my new golden age. With all the miracles of our troop within my grasp. Sorry to do this, Valens. But right now, I need answers. I think I'll start by dropping a bomb. That should, sh that should shake things up. Valens, I wouldn't be so sure about those miracles. Not as long as I have this. And what might that be? I see it bears a grammary seal. I should have brought this to your attention sooner. But I didn't imagine you'd be planning your comeback quite so fast. What is this? A document showing the true recipient of the ma performance rights to Magnifi's miracles. What? Zack? Grammary? He wrote this. What? He passed everything to his daughter. Trucy Enigmar. Actually, she's officially my daughter these days. So, definitely some papers. <laughs> Preposterous! Zack's... Zack is gone, vanished into the void. This is the genuine article. Zack was alive when he wrote this. Both myself and the notary can testify to this. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
funny. Why? Why does fate toys? Why does fate toy with me so? Why must my life be lived in thrall to, to the dead? You're not the only one with that problem. You shot Magnifi. Yes, it was Zack. It was. And then he left. And my career as a magician fell into darkness. Don't you think there might be some way out of it? Say, if you could prove Zack Grammarie shot Magnifi. Was that why you testified? Yes, my way out. It should have been my way out. Well, it might not be too late, Mr. Valens. All you need is a way to prove your case. Who really killed Magnifi Grammarie? I believe I have the answer to your prayers right here. Zachary Marie wrote one more thing before passing on. This... This is a confession! In which he admits to the killing of Magnifi Grammarie. See? All according to your plan. I am a magician by trade. Deception is my life's work. I fool the audience, give them a fleeting dream. Yet, it seems the tables have turned. Now I am the audience, believing in the deceptions I have brought upon myself. Zack wrote this right in front of me. After I explained your situation to him. I look up. So good. Oh my good. You do know what this confession that this confession is nothing but lies. Yes, it's my opinion that Sacra Marie killed no one. You must be thinking the truth is a simple matter of elimination. Two received instructions to kill, but if one is innocent, then the one who remains is guilty. That will be the logical conclusion, yes. So he vanished to protect me, his partner. <laughs> a stirring tale, tis true. Did you shoot Magnifi Grammarie in the forehead? If I had, and I told you, what would you do? Run to the police, perchance? Do as you will. There is nothing left for me now. It is true, after all. I have little talent. I needed my mentor Magnifi's repertoire. It was as if a little demon grabbed a hold of me. I knew it. So Valent Grammarie did kill the great Man Magnifi. It was kind of obvious, I'm not gonna lie, but okay. <laughs> so sorry, Mr. Wright. But it was not I who shot my mentor. Come again. Wh what? But if it wasn't you, then who was it? There wasn't another disciple, was there? Another disciple, such as... I don't know. Knack in Talon? Knack in Talon grammar maybe? Your wild fancies couldn't be farther, further from the truth. Only Sack and Valent received those threatening letters. But there was another. One more person could have fired that pistol that night. I don't suppose you figured it out by now. If it wasn't Sack or Valent, who shot Magnifi? Then it had to be the only other person at the scene, which means... Wait, you don't mean... Yes. The great Magnifi Grammarie himself. I don't think... Wouldn't it be kind of hard... Kristoff, that's his name. But... I mean... I don't think it would be easy to shoot yourself in the forehead... There would be those, like... What are they called? Like... Those burns. Yeah, how we put the gun back on the tray. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it doesn't make sense. What the fuck? Oh my god, this episode doesn't make sense and it's driving me insane. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, exactly. 
And there is no way he, he would be able to, like, hold the gun like this and aim it, like... Like this, and aim it directly at his forehead. And fire. Uh... Not with that idea! <laughs> You find it hard to believe. To be honest, I hadn't even imagined it as a possibility. Because it probably isn't, but okay. When I arrived that night, the old man was still alive. He appeared to be asleep. I... I could not shoot him. But when I turned and made to leave the room, the old man called out to me. So you spoke with Magnifi Grammary? Yes, and this is why I knew what he had done. Magnifi transferred the rights to his repertoire to my partner, Sacra Marie, not me. I see. And I guess I owe you an apology. I always thought you were the one who did it. You owe me no apology. Huh? My crime was, in a way, more serious than that of a murder. What? Your crime? Is Valentine Marie confessing something to me? What could be more serious than murder? You see, I knew that two letters had been sent. There were there are no secrets between partners. It was easy to find out. That was when I understood Magnifi's plan. He wanted to die by one of your hands. Little did I expect it had anything to do with the rights to his repertoire. A child? I was thinking the exact same thing! A child. <laughs> that was when I heard it. The little demon whispering inside my heart. The demon. Let me confess, I had intended to shoot Magnifi. And I planned on framing my partner for the crime. What? What? That night, I prepared something before going to Magnifi's hospital room. Which was... IV fluid, of course. I'd seen it on an... I'd seen it on an earlier visit. If Sack did not shoot, I would do the deed. And I would use the IV liquid to place the murderer on his hands. That was my plan. But you didn't shoot him. I could not. The demon in my heart fled when the moment came. But then Magnifi called me back. I am sorry, Valent. I am giving my magic to Sack. Not you. You still lack the draw he has. Please help him, if you can. I left the room, and then I stopped. The shock of what I, I had just been told consumed me. That is when I heard that fateful gunshot. Magnifi Grammarie, killing himself. Then the demon awoke anew within me. Zack killed him. He was the one. Blame him. And the magic will be yours. I altered the scene of a suicide. I took the pistol from his hand, wiped off the, the prints. Ah, then I used a syringe to add the IV liquid I'd brought. So in the end, things happened pretty much as planned. Mine if he died, and you framed Zack for his murder. As planned, indeed. Of course, the outcome was somewhat different than I had had anticipated. Well, what do you think? Do you believe my story? Can it be believed? Truly. That was seven years ago. I don't know what to believe, but... Yeah, the gun in the tray makes sense. <laughs> that is what everything... Yeah. Like the, um... The burn marks after the gun. I don't remember what they were called. Oh my god, my brain just doesn't want to. Okay, whatever. But you know what I'm talking about. Like, if you shooting yourself a point blank, there would be like a residue around like the gunshot. I don't know what to believe, but yes. I'm glad I heard it from you, Mr. Valent. Thank you. It is I who should be thanking you, Mr. Bites. 
Only when I had lost everything could I make my decision. You're going to turn yourself in. My partner may have vanished, but not so my guilt. And as my guilt stays, all else begins to leave me. My friends, my performance rights, my magic. I've had enough of vanishing acts. I understand. I thought my life was ruled by a dead man. But I find I was wrong. For Sacra Marie was alive. Well, not anymore. And now, it occurs to me. What if he was not the only one who survived? What do you mean? You see, now that I think about it, I realize that I... No. We never saw proof of her demise. We never saw her body. Um, her? The mind races, and, and the mouth flaps on. My apologies. Forget this matter. I can only hope that the day will come when I meet when I again meet my partner, Sacra Marie. Then I shall apologize for my terrible mistake. I am glad we had this chance to talk. Thank you. Sacra Marie, Shady Smith, whichever name you prefer, he is no longer with us. The truth revealed in that trial was only a sliver. And the impenetrable darkness that remained has taken another another life. I knew that I'd have to what I'd have to do to push back the darkness for good, and it would involve paying that man a visit. Sorry, sir. Prisoner Christoph Gavin is currently occupied. I see. Do you know when he'll be finished? Ah, um, well... Could you go find out? Ah, certainly, sir. Please wait here for a moment. My apologies to the guard. There's something I need to see. There it is. A yellow envelope. In the center is... Drew mission. I was right. When I arrived at the studio, Mr. Mission was at his desk. He seemed to be writing a letter, but he quickly sealed the envelope. It was the yellow envelope. I heard it was left at the crime scene. If this is the last letter that Drew Mission wrote, then there's something I need to do. The last thing I need to do, in fact. Here it goes. Let's see if this atroquinine spray finds anything. It looks like it says, damn it, Christoph. <laughs> yeah, he is so boring and just like, uh -uh. I don't like him either. Like, there's nothing special about him. Like, sure, he is like really quirky and uses a toothbrush on like everything but his teeth. And he has, like, the biggest fucking mouth. But other than that, really forgettable. Honestly, I was like, who the fuck is this bitch when I fucking looked him up? So, uh, Brushel or, um... The director Hottie or Hickfield or whatever the fuck you want to fucking call him. Yeah, but he's so forgettable. <laughs> like, I forgot about him, like, completely. So this was Drew Misham's Messenger of Death. It was this stamp, alright? No mistaking it. I both of them for different reasons. Valid. It's not his tongue, though. I'm pretty sure it's his tie. I 
and his last letter was sent to Christoph Gavin. Gotcha. The interview request came, like you said it would. And they're looking into the case. I swear on my life, I won't tell them about you. So please, release the spell you've put on my daughter. I'll write later with a report. Finally. Decisive evidence. What's this? A burglar. In jail? Gavin. I didn't know you moonlighted in larceny, right? Gavin, there's something I have to ask you. Can I steal your stuff? The answer is no. My apologies, but there's not much I care to discuss. Vera Misham hasn't received her verdict yet. You follow me, Gavin? There are no known survivors of a troquinine poisoning. Yeah, but it, it looks like it looks a lot like his tongue, so I totally get where you got it from. Like I thought it was at first, and I was like, no, that's his tie. Thank fucking god. <laughs> but it never hurts to hope. Okay, I'll be leaving now then. Right. Wait. Yeah, Gavin? Would you mind leaving that letter? It's private. Oh, sorry, I forgot I had it. Many thanks. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh. Oh, you sneaky bastard! You've now seen all the clues in this case. Clues I gathered over seven long years. Now it is time. Every story has an ending. We've come to the final chapter. Final trial. Find the truth. We're the only ones who can. Okay, Colin Morgan. This is like... Take it just like, bye, beach! <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. Okay, it's not too long. It's not too long. We got this. But, yeah, I, I, think, I think I did good in saving this for today. <laughs> because that was almost three hours. Welcome to court. Seven years, all leading to one verdict. A verdict which you must decide. Is the defendant, Vera Misham, innocent or guilty? The courtroom doors are opening. The trial awaits. Are you ready to begin? Something inside me. Rising. Surfacing. It will make sense. Something important. Lost long ago. It's close now. So close. Oh. Court is now in session for the trial of Vera Misham. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Prosecution is ready to rock. Prosecutor Gavin, how is the defendant Vera Misham's condition? Acute atrocrine poisoning, according to her position. She could die at any time. Thus, her absence from the courtroom today. What? They can't put her on trial without her being here. It is unusual. We should wait for her to get better and do it then. It's so bureaucratic of them. That's being a little harsh. They can't delay the trial any longer. They risk having no one left to try. A trial without a verdict can only cause grief. The records of this case and experience tell us this. The 
Apologies to the defendant, but the show must go on. Right, if Vera dies, the trial will be cancelled. I'm not going to let that happen. Mr. Wright told me everything that's been going on behind the curtain all these years. I'm going to get Vera her innocent verdict while there is still time. Very well. Your opening statement, Prosecutor Gavin. The prosecution's case is unchanged by recent events. Why did Vera Misham succumb to poison? Because she couldn't live with the guilt of what she'd done. Objection! But Vera was poisoned with the Troquinine! Sorry. The exact same poison that took her father's life. What better confession could you ask for? Being the killer, she would have had access to the poison. Significant, since it's rather hard to come by. Hmm, that is true. In other words, I see no need for further discussion. We could have our- we could have had our verdict yesterday. Well, Mr. Justice, if you have no objections, I see no reason to postpone the verdict. What we need to worry about isn't the verdict, but the trial itself. The defense holds that Vera Misham is the victim, not the killer. What do I have here, actually? Okay, we're just back to here. Nice, sweet. Lovely. Well, if that's so, then you have to prove something. She was in court, giving her testimony before us. How do you propose her killer poisoned her? Oh, and incidentally, it would be nice if you told us who her mystery killer was. The prosecution's objection is sustained. May I ask the defense to prove it, its claims to the court? Tell us how Vera Misham was poisoned. I've got two things to prove here. Who did it, and how. Which did first. How? How did the killer poison Vera Misham? I will focus first on the method used. Hmm. Any comments before we, be for before we begin, Prosecutor Gavin? Not a bottle or container of the poison was found in the defendant's body. I see. So the vector of poisoning is unknown. Is the defense prepared to prove how the poison reached Vera Misham? Yes, Your Honor. Very well. What method was used to poison Vera Misham? Indeed it is, nail polish. What's this? My, what a beautiful bottle. I'd like to give whoever to sign that a hand. Uh, damn it, I don't have a laugh track. <coughs> it's that nail polish. Hmm, it's colorless. Huh. Something the matter? No, nothing. Nothing at all. So the killer put poison in this bottle and made her drink it. As Prosecutor Gavin has told us, this is nail polish. Nail polish? It's like paint for nails. You know any women with red nails? Ah, my wife has red nails. I see. So she's been painting them all this time. Sometimes, I question... The IQ of the judge. As recall yesterday's trial. Remember when Vera was testifying to the court? Court is now back in session. Vera seems pretty tense. She's practically chewing her fingernails clean off. Whenever Vera became nervous, she had a habit of biting her nails. Her nails? Prosecutor Gavin? When the prosecution had Vera examined, did they check her nails? I... well, I... got... Clavier, just fucking say that you suck as a prosecutor and move on, please! <laughs> Bailiff! Have them check the defendant's nails at once. Mr. Justice! Yes? Do you know who did this? Do you know who put poison in that nail polish? Yes. That bottle belongs to Vera Misham. Why do you ask? You know someone else who might have a bottle like this? No, just checking. Mr. Justice, 
You are about to accuse someone of poisoning that bottle of nail polish. Please dispense with the chatter. You realize the weight of this ac accusation. Here, let me show you. It's barely anything, Your Honor. Understood, Your Honor. No problem. I know what I'm doing this time. Then let us ask. Who poisoned Vera Misham via her nail polish? Oh, fitting. There he is. What? What's this? Christoph Gavin? What's your game? My bro. There's no way you could do a thing like that. You should know that better than anyone else. Indeed. He is behind bars. I know. However, that doesn't mean it wasn't it was impossible to do what he did. What? Ask yourselves when he put the poison in the bottle. It could have been yesterday, it could have been a month ago, maybe it was a year ago, or perhaps it was seven years ago. But, but Christoph Gavin had no motive for killing this poor girl. It's simply inconceivable. Prosecutor Gavin doesn't seem to think so. That face tells me one thing. Chris, Christoph Gavin's own younger brother doesn't find it inconceivable at all. Hmm. Well, Prosecutor Gavin, if you feel there is a clear and pressing need, then we may have to summon Christoph Gavin from jail as a special witness. Fine. I've known for some time that an impenetrable darkness lurked at the bottom of this. A darkness that has swallowed even myself. Okay. The defense's wish is granted. Let prisoner Christoph Gavin take the stand. Bailiff, begin proceedings to call a special witness. The witness is Christoph Gavin, currently residing in solitary cell 13 at Central Prison. Ah, Your Honor. How nice to see you again. It's been quite a while, hasn't it? To what do I owe the pleasure of your company? It's not every day I'm summoned from my solitary cell. In fact, it's never. I think you already know, Mr. Christoph Gavin. Ah, Mr. Justice. I hear you've been doing quite well for yourself. Uh -huh. Why do I feel like somehow he's still my boss? Stiff upper lip, Apollo. You can do it! Does this bottle look familiar? Ariadone nail polish? Why oh, yes, I use it myself. As did the late defendant, I hear. She's not dead yet! And? Was there something concerning this bottle you wish to talk to- you, you wish to ask me about? I admit, I respect her for her taste in nail polish. Her taste, indeed. This nail polish was how their emission was poisoned! A troquinine, was it? You're well informed about the case, Mr. Gavin. Even in solitary, much comes to my desk. And I have nothing to do but read. Well, Clavier? Maybe you can explain this. You're being accused again. By him. Again. Ah, and... You agree with this accusation, do you? Let's hold a proper trial, shall we? Christoph Gavin, your testimony, please. I'd be delighted. The charges against you are quite severe, Mr. Gavin. You are suspected of the poisoning of the defendant, Vera Misham. Please testify on the matter, on this matter, to the court. Ooh. Owning the same nail polish does not a murderer make. I have been in solitary confinement for half a year. How could I poison her? Her father died of the same poison. The meaning of which should be clear. The prosecution's case holds. She poisoned her father, then attempted to poison herself. Surely, you aren't going to suggest I was responsible for poisoning her father too. Well... I'm afraid the defense's claim is sounding rather unlikely. Naturally. For one, I don't even know the missions. Isn't that so, Mr. Justice? Very well, Mr. Justice. Begin your cross-examination. I'm accusing Christoph Gavin, my ex-boss. But I know he poisoned the missions. The question is when 
could he have done it? Not to mention why. There we go. So we can go. We've got to go all the way to five. Surely. There we go. Hmm. Yeah, it's a scar. Gotcha! It's you who killed Drew Misham. A bluff worthy of your new mentor, Mr. Wright. Oh, really? Well, you see, I saw it. Right when you said her father, too. Your hand tensed naturally, and a little devil appeared to give me the news. And, let's assume, for the sake of argument, that you saw me being tense. What does that mean? Are all tense witnesses guilty? And tell me, was Drew Misham fond of nail polish, too? Sorry, but there's one more... More than one way to, way to poison a man. You don't need nail polish to get to someone's mouth. Huh. Then I must be very talented indeed. You see, Drew Misham was killed on October 6th. My life was already in my solitary confinement cell at Central Prison. Yes, do check on the sheep. If that's not an alibi, then I don't know what is. And you found a way, all the same. It was a trucy! Yay! Oh my god, that, that's, that makes it even better now. <laughs> there should have been two of them. That would have been cute. <laughs> and I found it too. This is how you poison Mr. Mission. Where's the hacking stamp? I'm sure this commemorative stamp requires no introduction. The night Mr. Misham died, he was seen writing a letter. A truck one nine was found on this stamp, Mr. Gavin. Oh, I do have it. Well, I don't have it, I guess, but I have a copy. I don't fucking know. How, I don't know. I don't know how the evidence works in this fucking games. <laughs> so am I to understand this stamp was the murder weapon? Yes, you are. Oh, yes. This stamp was found in your prison cell. That is all, Your Honor. Order! 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 Poison on the back of that stamp! After Drew Mission was killed, someone paid a visit to this witness's cell. Phoenix Wright. Caddy! That's when he found the stamp. You made Drew wish, wish, miss him. Write you a letter. That's how you killed him. What? My, my. You've upset my poor brother to the point of uselessness. Allow me to clarify this matter, Justice. All you need to do is recall witness Spark Brushel's testimony. Well, that's the thing, see? After he put his letter in that envelope, Mr. Misham sat there searching his desk drawer for something. His desk drawer? He has a stamp, a so-called postage stamp, end quote. He was looking for a stamp. Ergo, he had no intention of using this stamp. What are you getting at? What I'm arriving at is that this commemorative stamp was in a frame. It was mere coincidence that he used it that night. That would seem to be the case. Or perhaps you mean to suggest that I can somehow manipulate coincidence. He does have a point. How, co how would this witness know if the victim was going to use that stamp? Without that... 
He couldn't have planned the murder. What? Really, Clavier. You should be seeing through these weak-spined bluffs by now. He's right, though. How could anyone have known Mr. Misham would use that stamp that night? Least of all, Christophe Gavin locked away in his cell. Well, it seems that the defense has run out of things to say. I assume he had something to say in the first place. I believe the defense's bluff has been called. The defense's bluff? I'm not sure I agree with you there, Christophe. Clavier? Honestly, I wanted to believe you. But the defense wasn't trying to get away with the bluff. You were, Christophe. What are you saying, Prosecutor Gavin? He had four heads. What was your accusation again? Huh? Oh, it was that... This poison stamp killed Drew Misham, yeah? To which my brother responded thusly. There was no way to know when Misham would use the stamp. Yes, that's right. Which is why it couldn't have been planned. Tell me. It needs to be planned. Why? Uh... Why couldn't it have been a coincidence? The defense's case is simply that Drew Misham died by that stamp. That's all. Coincidence. Kristoff, you tried to slip out from under this, his accusation by changing the subject. If that's not bluffing, what is it? What are you up to, Clavier? I could ask you the same question, Kristoff. Huh. I silenced the defense with the fewest words possible. Called efficiency. B but Mr. Gavin, that's impermissible testimony. Very well. I shall take his claim head on then. Justice. W what? You accused me of Drew Misham's murder, yes? Then allow me to ask you, what possible reason could I have to kill a part a painter? Apollo, motive. He's talking about a motive. Hmm. Indeed. It's hard to see how an attorney could come to want to kill a painter. Now here's something. Why didn't they bring up the motive from the very beginning? Unless he was afraid it was a battle he might lose. So, what does it mean? It means there might be a weak spot. Maybe I have some evidence to prove a motive. A motive for murder. This is a vital, if not the most vital, not the most vital element in this case. Please consider this when making your statement. I'd say it's about this. I'd say it's about this vital. That's pretty vital. Well, Mr. Justice, I'm going through with this no matter what. Understood, Your Honor. I'd like to present evidence. And and see what you have for us. What reason did Christoph Gavin have for wanting to murder Drew Misham? Christoph Gavin's motive becomes clear. When we consider why the stamp came to Drew Misham's studio in the first place. And why is that? Forgery, Your Honor. Go back seven years. Drew Misham accepts his first job creating forged evidence. I've seen that before. A page from a diary was Ditch Magnifi Grammarie's diary. Ah, when attorney Phoenix Wright lost his badge, yes. This was the evidence he presented to his loss. This evidence is a fake, yes. But did Mr. Wright request the forgery be made? That was never proven! Objection! The defense attorney on that case was Phoenix Wright. Who, other than him, drunk with the prospect of victory, could have done it? And why would they? Just out of curiosity, do you remember this letter? This is the first page. And this is the second. And those were presented in court yesterday. This letter was sent to Drew Misham by the client who requested that forgery. The enclosed stamp was none other than the poison commemorative stamp. Drew Misham drew his last breath just the other day. However, the motive for his murder was already seven years old. Seven years old. The client who requested this forgery was very cautious. Cautious. He tried to erase anything, and anyone with connections to the forgery. 
to keep them from talking. But he made a mistake. The stamp was a picture of my favorite magicians, so I kept it. Father took me when I was very young. It was a great magic show. I loved it so much. The killer's time bomb was laid. The poison stamp was sealed within a glass frame. Where it sat for seven whole years. He have four heads. Do you understand what you're telling us? The one who schemed up the forged diary page was the one who poisoned the stamp. And it was Phoenix Wright who presented the forged evidence seven years ago. Adding the two statements together, the one who schemed to kill Drew Misham was none other than Phoenix Wright. Objection! Sorry, but that's not going to, that's not how this is going to go down. Oh, then how will it go down? I checked through the records on that case when I found this. Seven years ago, just before the trial began. Oh boy. Um, here. What's this? I don't know. I just got it over there in the hall. He told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit with spiky hair. And one more thing. I'm sorry to have sprung this on you so suddenly. I received the files from your previous attorney only yesterday. I understand. I am asking the impossible of you. Yes, well, you haven't really told me what happened yet. When we did, let's play cards. And that was enough. Phoenix Wright was put on the case the day before the trial started. He didn't have time to request a forgery. The day before. Now here's the question. Just who was Shady Enigmar's previous defense attorney? No. This can't all be... But it is all true. There was another man, a defense attorney with a badge on his collar. It was you! Christoph Gavin! Order! 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 What is the meaning of this? Witness! I mean, defendant! Uh, former lawyer! Let me begin by denying this. Objection! It's easy enough to look up, Mr. Gavin, and impossible to prove if you can't. Attorneys are registered with the court the day before the tri trial begins. In other words, no record remains in the court. How exactly did you intend to prove Phoenix Wright's claim? Hmm. That would be difficult. I'm afraid this line of inquiry won't yield. Objection! He have four heads. Are you sure you don't have evidence? What's wrong with Prosecutor Gavin? He looks clammy. Evidence! Evidence that shows this man, Christoph Gavin, requested that forgery seven years ago. Clavier? Just prove it! Clear up these doubts now. I swear, I'm off this case. He must have thought of some evidence. Apollo! Prosecutor Gavin looks like he's in physical pain. Darkness. I have to pull that darkness out of him. Okay. <laughs> and proof is the only way I can. What proves Christoph Gavin's link to... Christoph Gavin's link to Drew Mission? Well, Mr. Justice... You claim Christoph Gavin requested a forgery of Drew Misham seven years ago. Prove it. It can be proven. Simply ridiculous. Why even discuss it? This evidence does not. Are you telling the truth, Apollo Justice? I am. Then I say we give him the benefit of the doubt. Very well. If you're wrong about this, be prepared for a penalty. Objection. Sure. Your Honor, you do the defense an injustice. Mr. Justice is clearly passionate about this claim. Yeah, exactly. When he's calling Apollo by his name, I was like, oop. <laughs> Should the penalty not match his passion? See, this is what I mean. Yes. Christoph, I don't fucking like you, but that... Yes. 
That actually makes me scared. I haven't given a penalty like that in a long time. Oh well, Mr. Justice. Fine, Your Honor. All I have to prove is any kind of link. Something that ties Christoph Gavin to Drew Mission. And I have something that clearly does the job. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Justice. Present your evidence. Show us the link between your witness and Drew Mission. Who? This evidence proves there's a link. Objection. That scrap of paper? I'm afraid I can't let you submit that. Is there some problem? There is. How could you possibly have that? You couldn't. Hmm? Hey! That's Daddy's handwriting! Mr. Wright's handwriting? What's the meaning of this? Ah, I see now. Yes, of course. What do you mean, of course? I just remembered I had a visitor yesterday. Phoenix Wright came to my cell. Except I wasn't there. Phoenix Wright. When I returned, I saw he had something of mine in his possession. Of course, I had no intention of letting him get away with right reading my private mail. Mail? You mean this letter was in your cell? No. However, it appears Mr. Wright has yet to be cured of his bad forging habits. Well, if it's a forgery, then it's not a very good one. The handwriting's terrible. This is Mr. Wright's reproduction of what was written in the real letter. Reproduction? When Mr. Wright visited Christoph Gavin's cell, he brought with him a small video camera. What? He recorded his entire conversation with you, Mr. Gavin. And the contents of your personal mail. R regardless, this mockery of a piece of evidence will never be accepted by the court. Evidence based on a video a man with no authority whatsoever claims he took. A man who happens to be an ex-attorney suspected of forgery. Ah, Prosecutor Gavin. Prosecutor Gavin? As embarrassing as it is for me to say, I am afraid my brother is incapable of making rational judgments at the moment. Your Honor, your decision, please. The defense's claim is denied. What? Only actual evidence is permitted in the court of law. Please remove the defense's evidence from the record. Better luck next time, Justice. Well, you've certainly taken a detour from our cross-examination. But the defense appears to be lacking proof. I'm forced to end the cross oh, I'm forced to end the cross-examination of Christoph Gavin at this point. Apollo! Do something! I'm thinking, but without evidence. I don't have anything I can use on him. Very well. This ends the special witness's cross-examination. The show's over, yet the crowd screams for more. Only now do I understand why. Prosecutor Gavin? Frankly, I'm relieved. This has been bothering me for seven whole years, and I'm tired of the whole youthful angst scene. Now's our chance. Let's clean out the family closet. Huh, Christoph? Veer, you're spinning out of control. Calm yourself before you say something you'll regret. Spinning out of whose control? Mine? Or yours? Take a moment to consider everything you've built. Your reputation as a prosecutor. Your fame with the masses. You could lose it all, Clavier. Apollo! Did you see that? He's trying to press Prosecutor Gavin! Prosecutor Gavin! Try to remember! What's really important to you? You amuse me, half forehead. I couldn't forget what's really important to me, even if I tried. In fact, I haven't. Not even once. Seven years ago. Finally, 
You just couldn't resist, could you? Yeah, right. Resist what? Presenting solid evidence? Might I request we put the current cross-examination on hold? The prosecution would like to call a new witness. I know, right? He looks so different, but like, he looks the same. I can't... <laughs> I can't quite put my finger on it, but it looks like... He looks like exactly the same, but also so different. <laughs> State your name and occupation for the record. I'm familiar with the trial. i watched the video several times. Didn't you find anything unnatural about it? Unnatural? Well, you did seem unusually well prepared. I mean, Mr. Wright had only just presented his evidence. And the next moment you call in Drew Misham. It was almost as if... Almost as if... What? Funny. It didn't even occur to me to wonder. But now that I do, I see there's only one possible explanation. Almost as if, from the very beginning, you knew Mr. Wright was going to present that evidence. Correct. I knew that if I applied the usual pressure, Phoenix Wright would eventually come up with that forged diary page. Do this, Clavier. I knew because you told me, Kristoff. What? It was a night before the trial. Clavier. Kristoff? Not seeing you at the prosecutor's office the day before the trial. Huh. I won't be appearing in the trial, actually. Huh? Why not? I won't be facing off with you on your first trial, apparently. But in exchange, I brought information. Information? The attorney who'll be there in my place tomorrow is not to be trusted. Don't even give him the benefit of your respect. Listen, I want you to call in a special witness. Then. I wondered about it all at the time. How did Kristoff know so much? Prosecutor Gavin! Kristoff! We were supposed to face each other in that trial. Fair fight, brother to brother. I deserve that much. You let me borrow the victim's belongings. You showed me all your research on the case. The victim's belongings? <laughs> oh, God. Which would have included Magni- Thank you so much, Backflip Pampy, for the follow! <laughs> I believe that may have been the Kristoff objection to... <laughs> Just from the color alone. <laughs> because I've, I've color-coded them, so I, I know. Uh, anyways... Yeah, and uh, but like technically, the one with Dahlia wasn't supposed to be Edgeworth's first. Uh, technically, you had like one he was supposed to like substitute for before that. <laughs> but uh, that's the one where Kay's father dies, and also. Um, What's his name? Mackerel. That's his name. <laughs> Anyways. Which would have included Magnifi's diary, wouldn't it? Mr. Gavin! My, my, Clavier. You disappoint me. You find trees, yet miss the forest. You're the one missing the forest, Mr. Gavin. You can't sweep this under the rug. Not anymore. Tell me what was going on behind that trial. Why not? I have achieved what I came here to do. I see no harm in a little reminiscing. Apollo! I think we're finally going to sh 
pardon, shine a light on the black belly of this thing, Trucy. We've done everything we could. I hope it's enough. Seven years ago, the day before the trial, I visited the detention center at the request of my client, Zach Grammarie. Two cards. One card. Showdown time. Enough. You lose, Gavin. Thanks for the work. Now go. To be honest, I don't know what his reasons were to this day. As far as I could tell, he dismissed me as his representation because I lost in a game of poker. And you were such a fucking shitty ass loser that you had to go and like destroy the other defense attorney's career, like completely. GG, not petty at all. <laughs> I can come to no other conclusion. How do you used to say something? If you want to know a man, you have to compete. Zack wasn't watching his points or the cards. He was watching the man behind the cards. Christoph Gavin. What other implication? I'm too dumb. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Phoenix Wright. A second-rate attorney who relies on luck and bluffs. He dismissed me and went with that pitiful excuse for a man. Yeah, you're right. You deserve to die for that error alone. Hold it! So the one who requested that forgery was... Oh, I'm not admitted, admitting to anything. My point is, these two men shamed me, and I could not forgive that. Phoenix Wright and Sacra Marie both deserved what they got. So you asked Mr. Misham to forge that evidence. So you could win? Then, when you were dismissed as Sacra Marie's attorney, you used your forged evidence as a trap! You fed me information about the forgery you made. Yeah. That sounds pretty much like it. And you gave your dirty evidence to him. You're free to imagine what you will. My point is that all I had, had imagined came to pass. Everything went perfectly. Huh. <laughs> Incredible. If I wasn't laughing, I'd weep. Prosecutor Gavin? Someone make like a, a manipulation of that. I'd love to see that. Perfectly. You're mad, Christoph. Stop fooling yourself. What are you talking about, Clavier? Tell me, how did that trial end? Cancelled. When the defendant vanished. Ah, I get it. So, Christoph, you've been living in fear for seven years. Or is it versus? I, I read that as as. I'm dumb. Sorry. Oh, damn. Yeah, that would just be, like... They would just drag a bullshit after bullshit after bullshit. What? You were afraid your forgery would be revealed and your reputation thrashed. Trashed. Spot the real evidence. You couldn't leave things to chance. So you watched everyone involved with the case for seven years. You know, he always felt like he was being watched. That's what he said, every day, for seven years. But I felt it too! Journalists sure he is being watched, in quotes. 
Don't you wonder why Sakura Marie got rubbed out after seven years? Right after coming into contact with me? Wait just a minute. Sakura Marie was seen by this reporter. How is that possible? Was he alive after being gone seven years? Hmm. I don't know if it would ever end, actually. I mean, after a... It would have to end. In three days, right? Finally. I knew this moment was coming. I just didn't think we'd get here so fast. Sacra Marie. Gone missing for seven years. Trucy's father. What's wrong, Apollo? Go get him! Right. Leave it to me. Allow me to refresh the court's memory. Six months ago, Christoph Gavin was charged with murdering a mysterious traveler. I remember him quite well. Shady Smith, was it? Poisoned in a Chinese restaurant. Tragic. The details don't really matter right now. What matters is that traveler was Sacra Marie. What is it, Apollo? Huh? Keep going. I'll talk about it later. Did she already know? Someone please explain this. Mr. Justice, can you explain this? It all started seven years ago. The great magician Magnifique Grammarie's death started it. Yeah, they have to end in three days. Magnifique Grammarie's death and his, sus and his student Sack Grammarie, the suspect. Whoever defended Sack in court successfully would be famous beyond belief. Thinking that, Christoph Gavin did the unthinkable. He forged evidence. Drew Misham. Actually, it was his daughter, Vera, who really did the work. You took precautions when you had that forgery made, didn't you, Mr. Gavin? Precautions? keep people from talking, of course. These two know too much. Leave them alive, and there'll be nothing but trouble. That's when you planned your poisoning of the forgers. A truck with nine. Applied to a commemorative stamp. The luck was on Mr. Misham's side. The bomb didn't go off. His daughter! She saved him by taking the stamp. I see. That wasn't the only bomb he set up. The area donay, nail polish, of course. You noticed something when you requested that forgery. When Vera Mission was nervous, she has a bad habit. A tendency to bite her nails. <laughs> the nail polish was her good luck charm. She was almost kidnapped once. Since then, she's been... Well, you can see for yourself. She refuses to leave the house. That person gave me a good luck charm for when I absolutely had to go outside. It protects me. Yes, apparently she received something. A gift. She won't tell me what it was. It was from that client. The one who wanted that note made. It was his insurance. Insurance? As long as she lived quietly at home, there was no danger to her. But what if she had to go outside? If she ran into any trouble, she'd become nervous. And the nail polish would do the rest. His time bomb sat there for seven years. And then, they went off. Almost simultaneously. If you're finished, may I return to my cell now? I'm not accustomed to standing for such long periods of time. Mr. Gavin, have you heard a single thing we've said? Oh, I listened quite closely to your little tale. Quite an entertaining piece of fiction. What? Clavier, surely you understand. We're back to the evidence. The lacking evidence. Nothing proves the link between him and the Atroquinine that took Drew Misham's life. 
What about the restaurant? You killed Sacra Marie to keep him from talking. I killed no man of that name. Read over the report again, if you'd like. The victim was a traveler by the name of Shady Smith, about whom we know little else. You can't seriously think I knew he was that particular fugitive. Okay, then why did you kill him? I plead my right to remain silent. Remain. Remem remain. Remember, this court did not convene to put me on trial. The defendant's name is Vera Mission, suspected in the murder of her father. My trial's been finished for six months now. Ah. I'm afraid we have strayed considerably from our purpose here. This court concurs with a witness. It is Defendant Vera Misham who is on trial here. No! But you were doing so good, Apollo! As long as there is no evidence to support the accusation against him, this course of inquiry cannot find Vera Misham innocent. Objection! Your Honor, Phoenix Wright spent seven years collecting this evidence. Objection! You still don't get it, do you? Let us assume there was poison in the nail polish. Who then was responsible for causing Vera Misham to bite her nails? What? It wasn't me, I know that much. The one who brought that poison to her lips was you. What? What? Evidence is everything. There is nothing more. I believe this discussion has reached its, its conclusion. Y Your Honor. Mr. Justice, you have performed admirably well for a novice attorney. I respect your partner. Phoenix Wright's determination as well. However, without direct proof, you have nothing. Isn't that right, Clavier? Unfortunately, yes, Christoph. You're right. That is... You would have been right until now. Oh, let's fucking go. What? Did the news not reach your desk in solitary? The eyes of the nation are on this courtroom today. This is the trial case for a new judicial system. That's right. I totally forgotten. The jurist system. Jurist, you say? The current judicial system has been deemed too closed off from society. This new system attempts to inject the wisdom of common citizens into the law. Common citizens? Wisdom? Is this some kind of a joke? What could we possibly gain from do by doing this? Entrusting our judicial system to a mindless emotionalness, emotional mob of irrational mouth breeders. Breathers. Common citizens have something called common sense. Common sense is not restricted by the law. Nonsense. There is only room for two in this court. Me and the law. Keep the riffraff out. Out, I say. They're not in the court, actually. They're watching everything by video camera. Can you allow this? Incidentally, the one responsible for making this happen was Phoenix Wright. Ph Phoenix Wright. So, everything was leading to this. Of course. Right. 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 <laughs> That hair, though. Oh, not that. Not that. I won't accept. I can't accept. This is no court. Law. The law is everything. Law is absolute. You let ignorant swine soil your courts? Kristoff, it's over. Clavier! The law is absolute. You can't be serious. What? Odd. I thought you spent your life looking for loopholes. The law isn't absolute. It's filled with contradictions. 
and the law is the end product of many years of history, the fruit of human knowledge, like a gem, polished to a gleam through trials and errors. It is this fruit we receive and pass on and face in our time, and it is always changing, growing. Nurturing it is our task as human beings, except for you, Christoph. You aren't changing. You've stopped. You're not needed anymore. I couldn't think of anything to say. Maybe because I still haven't seen enough. Someday, I'll know what law is. And I'll fight to change it if I have to. I see no need to further prolong this trial. This began as a trial of Vera Misham, accused of murdering her father. The painter, Drew Misham, however, several other incidents were re reviewed, and we seem to have reached a conclusion. Before this court declares a verdict, I await your decision. Jurors of the court, for the death of Drew Misham, how do you find the defendant, Vera Misham, innocent or guilty? I turn to you now to consider this matter. Okay, hold on. I am gonna do a thing here. I'm gonna, uh... Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. What is the button? There we go. This ends the trial for this case. Only the verdict remains to be decided. Defendant Vera Misham is currently in intensive care. If a decision cannot be reached today, it may never be reached. The factors involved are simple. Did the defendant poison her father that night? If so, she is guilty. And was there another reason for Mr. Misham's death? Did another person poison him? If so, she is innocent. A panel has been provided for each of you to input your decisions. That is all. Please, wait. Yes, jurist number six? There's something in the jurist's handbook here. Persons involved with the case may not be jurists. That is correct. I looked into all your dossiers. None of you were involved with the de development of the case. With the development of the case? I see. Does that answer your concern? It's time for your verdicts. Make your decision in the case against Vera Mission. After seven years, the truth is ready to be heard. Judge wisely. Judge well. Oh, okay, I see. I thought I could move the hand around. Um, wait, I just want to make sure that... Let me just... Okay, I am, am gonna... Go for guilty. Not because I want to, but... And so a verdict was reached on October 9th, 2.14 p.m. There are like two endings to this. The first verdict under the jurist system. A hung jury. The final verdict would have to wait to the f for the following day. But fate had different plans. At night, defendant Vera Misham's condition worsened. She died in her hospital bed. Her verdict was postponed for eternity. That's sad. Do I get to do it over? I guess I do. I guess I have to choose not guilty. From chapter start. No. I don't. Ta-da! No! Never mind. I, I always chose not guilty, obviously. Duh! <laughs> and so a verdict was reached on October 9th, 2.14pm. 
the first verdict on the jurist system. Innocent by unanimous decision. The record will show that when the verdict was announced, special witness Christoph Gavin laughed. A laugh louder than any ever heard before. Or since. A laugh that echoed in the halls of justice, lingering for what seemed like hours. October 10th, 8.30 a.m., the morning after the trial. In an intensive care ward, a true miracle occurred. Vera Misham opened her eyes. We're back to Hickfield. Love that. Vera! I'm so glad I... Don't cry, Apollo! I'm happy too! I'm proud! You did well, Apollo! When I thought about... What if Vera... I... Hey now, don't just start crying too. Um, sorry you had to see us like this. She's so cute. Vera? Thank you so much, Apollo. Thank you. No, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have pressed you like that. If... If I hadn't... You never would have bitten your nails. Yeah, I read about it. <laughs> I'm like, how much I miss? Uh, um, we kicked Kristoff's ass. <laughs> no, I was wrong. Staying locked inside like that, clinging to my good luck charm. Vera. When I opened my eyes and saw you, I finally understood. It's important to be part of the world. To see things with your own eyes. She's so cute, I can't. It looks like that poison had some effect after all. It killed off whatever was holding Vera back from life. I knew you'd pull through, Vera. I mean, that's what Apollo was fighting for the whole time. Your future. I won't forget it. Here, let me thank you. No, really, it's okay. Ooh, look! It's me! I love it! Thanks! <laughs> Is that me? <laughs> ah, yes. She really captured your essence, Apollo. Well... I think so, at least. That reminds me. Do you know where the other lawyer is? The other lawyer? Oh, you mean daddy? Except he's not a lawyer anymore. It's my fault, isn't it? I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no! That's not what I meant! No, it's okay. I'm through looking away from the things I've done. I hope I can look him in the eyes again someday and apologize. I'm sure he'd be happy to hear that. He brought all those things for me when he came to visit earlier. You mean that stack of videos? Mr. Wright finished watching them all? You know, I knew my real daddy was alive. Huh? I was there seven years ago, remember? I was the one who helped him vanish from the courtroom. Y you did what? How? I'm not telling. He promised me that day he went away. We may not meet again for some time, Trucy. But know this, I will be watching. And one day, I shall return. You're the next grammarie after all. Oh, Trucy. In the end, he couldn't keep that promise, could he? It's okay. Phoenix is my daddy now. Even if he can't really play the piano. That he can't. Oh, and I got you too. Even if your voice is kind of loud sometimes. And I made your list. Hey, come to think of it. Where is daddy? The one who can't play. Do you know Apollo? I think he said he had to meet someone. Hmm, I wonder. Maybe it's a new mommy. Huh. <laughs> oh, Trucy? Hmm? Yes, Vera? I 
was wondering, could you show him to me once more? Sir Hat, was it? Oh, he's not been knighted yet. Here goes, it was an impersonation, Mr. Hat. Objection! Ahem. Not loud enough. I like Miss Magic underwear better anyway. That's magic panties, Apollo. <laughs> Maybe the new daddy. <laughs> so, your memories returned. To the right. Was this all a part of your plan, too? I don't know what you're talking about. When I lost my memory, I was reborn. As Lamy Roar. But you knew my true identi identity, did you not? That is why you chose me as one of your jurists. Ah, you're thinking into it too much. Besides, there was no guarantee that regaining your memory would make you happy. Of course it is a happy thing. For so long, I thought I was alone. Now I know I have children. Two dear children. I am so proud of them. This too, I think, is thanks to you. Are you going to tell them? They do not know? Nope. They don't know their mother. They don't even know their siblings. Yes! She was the last all this time. I will go to them when the time is right. Until then, I... Don't worry. I'll take care of them for you. They're... They're very important to me, too. A little annoying at times, but still. I have to keep an eye on her, at least. Because I'm the only one who knows how she really feels on the inside. Your bracelet. Yes? I've seen a lot of mysterious things these past seven years. And your bracelets were the strangest of all. I remember meeting him half a year ago now in Christoph Gavin's office. And then I met you. Two fates destined to intertwine. And I was there when they crossed. I'll never forget that. Such a small thing, that bullet, yet it tore who I was away. Ten years ago, during a simple rehearsal, it was a miracle no one died. But I didn't, but I didn't survive that accident. That is why I left the troop, my family. Now, my memory has returned. I am myself once more. For the first time, I am glad to be alive, Mr. Wright. Speaking of miracles, Vera Mission regained consciousness this morning. I can only hope she's as glad as you are. It is a strange thing, fate. Sometimes a life is taken. Sometimes a life is spared. You know what I've been thinking? People don't die that easily, really. As long as they've got something worth living for. And that's pretty much the end of my story, for now anyway. I've still got a long way to go, and this power of mine, well, it needs some work. But there's hope now. We lost it, but somehow we found it again. That's why people are smiling again. Hope. I think I'll keep at this lawyer thing for a while. Oops, training time, gotta go, course of steel, here comes justice! I'm glad you're staying with the agency, Apollo. It's like, like I found my long-lost big little brother. Um, you, you say. Oh, and don't you worry about Troop Grammarie. Trucy's on the case. Now that I have this, thanks to Daddy. Trucy Grammarie? Frankly, I got my doubts, but Hat Grammarie, now that'll pack him in. Here comes Justice. Oh, I love Apollo so much, honestly. Not every day you get a trial that rocks harder than one of your gigs, yeah? That's why it's over. The governors are breaking up. The news caused a run on tissues at supermarkets nationwide. You're the real stars now. I look forward to our next jam session.
Well, it's finally over. You know, thinking about it. I've been a piano player longer than I was a lawyer. Now that everything's sorted and I've got time on my hands, maybe I'll take some lessons. Or maybe I'll take the bar exam. Again. Oh my god. Fleur, didn't you say that Kristoff looked so soft in the beginning? Like in the first case or something. So, I was standing around eating snackers the other day. When I got this crazy idea. What if they were golden? You could augment the crunch or better yet, make them ding. Ah, the power of science. Although well, the preservatives might not be 100% sa sa safe. No, 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 no. It is supposed to sound like Gewina. An unlikely event, you are wanting a Russian feast. Come to Borscht Bowl Club. The only thing colder than the restaurant is Borscht. Duh. But if greater challenge is being required... Then come to the hideout. You know who to ask for. I love her. Honestly. I love her. Olga's the best. Yes! Olga's supremacy! <laughs> Olga best gal. So, Kitaki Pastries is getting back to it. its eastern roots spread the culture, y'all. Yo, boss! Culture time! This is how we write root, capiche? We're still about giving back to the people. You boss, PR time! And this is how we write people, alright? Not that Wookiee's paying any attention. Oh, kids. This boy, Chinese characters on kick was a fly ID like 3,000 years ago, believe that. Man, you wanna keep make it today? You gotta keep it real, you know what I'm saying? Yo, that's why I made the OG cracker, for real. I know it don't look like no cracker, G. What, you want me to call it the OG muffin? Huh. I don't know where all this talk about food is coming from. You ask me, there's only one food, and that's noodles. Noodles forever. I got a new one too. See? This time, I just put a big chunk of salt in the bowl. I pretend Heldun's noodles is about the salt. Salt forever. <laughs> Nailed it! Exceptionally inquisitive nature has won me in an equivocal adoration is in something I don't fucking know. They used to call me Wesley Stinkler. Okay, thank you. I, I can't no longer have a new name, one that reflects my true academic nature. Wesley Sicko reporting. Yes, curiosity is a sickness, and I am the cure. Okay, Benedict Cumberbatch. Beneficent cumulative. <laughs> Butter who? Cucumber stitches. <laughs> I don't know how to thank you for all you've done. Light has returned to my life, and with it, joy. I may have lost years, but I have gained a treasure. Two treasures, in fact. I will think of them when I write my next song. Oh, brush a 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 here back on the beat with another interview. Eh? How do I feel about how things turn out? Those 
scoop, yet but journal journalist confidence is in mint condition. End quote. Butternut cabinet. <laughs> Decided to keep painting, originals only, of course. I suppose I'll have to see a bit of the world outside to find what to paint, but I know there are good people out there now. I've met them. The door is open. The world is waiting. Thank you. Very so cute! I can't! <laughs> Oh, that's cute. She drew them. Oh. Mm. That's it. It's the end of the game. <sighs> that was amazing. Oh boy, I love that. So that means that next up is dual destinies. And why while like the the, th the 3DS games aren't like necessarily the best and also like the animation is like kind of stiff. I'm still excited because I haven't played them since 2017. And you'll get used to the animation, you know. I don't remember much from Dual Destinies since it's been so long. Uh, I just remember like losing my shit at the beginning. I'm not gonna say why, but I'm just gonna say it. lost my shit at the beginning, and I was like, "What the fuck? What the fuck?" That was like literally all I could say, pretty much. And um, yeah, I can actually have snacks then and enjoy them. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know when though I should start it. I'm kind of tempted to just like jump like straight into it. Not now, but like uh, uh, tomorrow, maybe? Yeah, there were some some great characters, of course. And also, if you flub a line in like one of the episodes, um, you can get Phoenix to call Edgeworth daddy, so you know that's a thing. <laughs> so... Apparently, anyways, which is why I, I want to test it out. I know ex I know pretty much like what I have to. <laughs> we all know I want to hear that. <laughs> huh. I know like kind of when it is. So I just like have to make sure to like flub that line. But it's not gonna be for a while. Oh. Do both. Honestly, do. Maddie, all the way. <laughs> I think we made that clear today. Oh my god. I 
I also have no idea like how long the games are because I've, I've gotten like a, f a full like uh, playthrough of Dual Destinies in my recommendations on YouTube lately. But it's like it has no commentary and that's like 30 hours. But it's like, is it with or without the DLC? <laughs> Speaking of DLC, God, I hope I can actually use the DLC with the the the, 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 the non-emulated versions of the games. <laughs> I'll have to look into it a bit further, I guess. Spoilers! <laughs> Anyways, with that, I guess I'll be back tomorrow. When? Don't know. About the same time I started this, probably. And yeah, I don't really have like a set schedule on here. I just kind of like stream whenever. I'm also really <clears throat> depressed, you know? So like, we get up at fucking... 4 p.m. and then I have to eat and <laughs> no 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 it's fine it's fine it's fine it's fine it happens you know also I was like earlier <laughs> when Hailey and Meeple was like uh, was talking about uh, Trucy and Apollo being siblings I was just like sitting here like okay don't don't look anything just like Complete poker face. Just ignore it completely. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my god, no, I'm not doing it well. Let's see, when was it? Ah. <sighs> But I, I know, I know how, like, easy. Oh, nice. I, I hope to see you here then. So many more people have, like, started dropping by now. And it, it makes me, it makes me so happy. <laughs> but I know that, the like, the biggest turn off is probably, like, the really long streams. I know that I can stream for a long time. But, like I've said, like, several times. Ace Attorney is like one of my like special interests. <laughs> yeah, I also always upload a, a VOD to my YouTube channel. You can find the link in my about section. Um. Uh, yeah. I normally don't really stream for that long. It's usually like a few, like a few hours, like two, three hours, like on the other channel. But here, I just go like balls to the wall, just like it is a good series. And I know that most people only have played the trilogy because that's like what's like the, the most available at the moment. You know, you can play it on PC, you can play it on the PlayStation, Xbox. Uh, switch. But I also know that it's it's kind of like hard to like not only stream it but like play it on like a YouTube channel in general because there is like so much reading and it gets 
tiring. Uh, of course, it gets tiring. Like, my voice. I wanted to give up, like, several times in the beginning when I first started playing the first game. But I just kept going, and now I can keep going for 11 hours. <laughs> I am ashamed. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't believe I only have three games left. <laughs> the 5 a.m. streams are amazing. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> You're like here when I stream until 5 a.m. And I'm like... Go to bed, you have work in the morning. Like, I can sleep for as long as I want to, technically. But, like, you, on the other hand, you can't do that. <laughs> oh, boy. Dual destinies, like like the, the, the chapters, they seem really short. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I try my best not to stream for like way too long now because I know that it just fucks up for other people. So if... If, like, a stream lasts for too long, I will split it in two. I think, like, the max I'm willing to go is, like, six hours. Now, at least I'm trying my best to make that a rule. But who knows? I think I have to do two episodes tomorrow, or at least one and a half, because the first one is so short. Anyways, that's for tomorrow. Ugh. You know what? Since I've already like... No, I want to wait. I was thinking to like change the background into the the courtroom in Dual Destinies, but I want to wait. Maybe? Or I can do it now. Nah, sure, fuck it, let's do it now. Boop. <laughs> you can't really see it that well. Ta da <laughs> The blurry... <laughs> Reveal. <gasps> I'm gonna mess around with some like uh, uh, the the lighting and coloring and stuff just so that it looks better here because it's it's really dark and I don't like it being that dark, you know. So yeah. Also, I have to change the color of my uh, border, which is gonna be fun. Yeah, they change the the courtroom like all the time. <laughs> ha. Huh. Anyways, I hope to see you all tomorrow and I hope you have a great day or night. And yeah.